Now you're not going to get as much, that. you're not going to get a lot of mo- as much money, but you go, you take a bunch of them and you start doing a bunch of those picture in pictures. You know what I'm saying? And they're doing that in some cases. Correct. And it's working. Speeds things up. Wait, I gotta get my. my uh... We can't charge as much, but you know. Yes. Kevin. Kevin Claymont. Kevin Claymont. C L E M E N T. Yes, Kevin. Hey, it's uh, Thibodeau Associated. It's Crescent City Sports Rivalry Series on Cox Sports Television. Tonight, our five-game series begins with a showdown between the St. James Wildcats and the Lutcher Bulldogs. Hello, everybody. Ken Berthelot along with the coach, Wade Kaiser, and walking around this atmosphere, United States. Then, of course, later on, we'll be in Ponchatoula on the North Shore. Slidell and Ponchatoula coming back to Metairie later for St. Charles Catholic and De La Salle and John Curtis and Archbishop Brummel. Five great games in this rivalry series. It's going to be a lot of fun. I tell you what, some great football games right there. A lot of historic teams, a lot of teams that have uh, been playing for uh, uh, close to 100 years in some of that, like Jesuit Holy Cross. What a great setup for high school football. Well, tonight, two teams are resting on the laurels of their quarterbacks to win this big rivalry game. And uh, if we take a look at the visiting St. James Wildcats first, we're looking at a young man, number three, Shamar Smith. I'll tell you what, Shamar Smith, what a great athlete. I mean, he, he's going to be a dual-threat quarterback tonight. We're going to see him throw. We're going to see him run. He's a all-multi-purpose athlete. Uh, he could be a wide receiver. He can play in the secondary. He is electrifying. And then on the other side of the field is Colby Bourgeois. He's a senior quarterback and a leader on this team. Colby Bourgeois, last week in a tough loss to East Ascension, threw for 319 yards and four touchdowns. He can sling it, all right? This kid can make all the throws. Well, we'll take a break. Be back with the opening kickoff right after this. We are at the Dog Yard in Lutcher for this great rivalry between St. James and the Lutcher Bulldogs. We like things local, very local. Get the home field advantage when buying or refinancing your home with the local mortgage lending experts. NOLA Lending Group, a division of Fidelity Bank. NOLA Lending, now the proud mortgage lender of your New Orleans Saints. Riverlands Insurance Services, a team of professional agents serving Southeast Louisiana for over 40 years, focused on planning, implementing quality with personalized insurance. The strength of our company is our core of over 90 professionals specializing in the everyday needs of family to the complex world of business and risk management. Cost-effective insurance planning is how we help our families and our businesses every day. We don't wait for a disaster, we prepare for them. Count on Riverlands Insurance Services. Louisiana Dental Center, your dental home team. Proud partner of the New Orleans Saints and the LSU Tigers. The Crescent City Sports Rivalry Series on Cox Sports Television is brought to you by NOLA Lending Group, your home field advantage. By Riverlands Insurance, meeting all your insurance needs. By Louisiana Dental Center, your dental home team. By St. James Parish Hospital, inpatient, outpatient, ER, and urgent care. And by Louisiana Operation Lifesaver. Remember, when you see tracks, think train.
Well, there's a look at Robert Valdez, the coach of the St. James Wildcats. And boy, he is ready to go this year, kind of excited about what happened in game number one. They played another rivalry game, the railroad track rivalry. Of course, there's no more railroad tracks, but there's still a rivalry. And they took the class 1A or deep for the Lutcher Bulldogs. And we are set to go. Lutcher wearing the purple and gold, dressed out like LSU, and St. James dressed up like the Michigan Wolverines. It'll come down to McCrary, and he'll go straight up the middle of the field, diving past the 25-yard line to give Lutcher pretty good field position on their first offensive series. So here comes Colby Bourgeois, 5'11", 190 pounds, a senior. Wasn't very much of a runner last year, but has more mobility and practice mobility, and I think Coach Valdez is a little concerned that he might be the team that Bourgeois decides he might start using his feet a little more to try to hurt him. Pass for 319 yards in the first game, four touchdowns, two interceptions. But gives this team a sense of confidence, gives this Bulldog team a sense of confidence when he's back there. Keep it on the ground with Mealy. Rondell Mealy Jr., the son of a great LSU player. Bounces outside. Mealy just with a great bounce to the outside. And how does he do that? Well, he, he gets bottled up at the line of scrimmage right there. He keeps his legs moving, spins, and bounces to his left and finds running room. And everything was just already over pursued to the point of attack. And he found running room down the Lutcher boundary to get a nice game. Well, it, absolutely. You know, guys that you're going to have to watch there for that Lutcher offense is you're going to have to watch, of course, Rondell Mealy, that running back. He must have a big night tonight if Lutcher is going to get going. They're going to have to get some sort of balanced running attack, and he's going to be a big part of that. Offensive starter is brought to you by Riverlands Insurance. Second down, 10. Moves Mealy over to the right side, and Bourgeois with a quick toss complete to Cam Amato, and Amato very close to first down yardage, stopped just a yard short. Let's take a look at the St. James defense brought to you by Riverlands Insurance, a defense that has 10 experienced players returning. Well, I tell you what, they do have experience returning. They did a great job last week shutting out West St. John. Watch defensive back number 11, Aaron Joseph. He had a big pick six last week against West St. John. A huge momentum swing last week. See if he can do the same thing tonight. You know, one of those touchdowns came very early in the game, and that's something Robert Valdez likes very much. He likes to get that early start, get some points on the board early. He knows the importance of that in this series. Mealy looking for the first down on the left side. He's got it, and it takes a rugby scrum to pull him down. That's a nice little pickup right there, bouncing off the left side with a little iso play to pick up the first down. You know. Lutcher's going to have to be balanced. We're going to talk about that a little bit later, but last week they just threw the ball over the field. Now, you know, Colby's got a, Colby Bourgeois has got a nice arm. He can make those throws, but they've got to take some pressure off of him and run the ball a little bit, and that's going to be Mealy's job. Good look at Mealy right there. Five rushes, 21 yards last week, a 4.2-yard average. He's going to have to get going tonight. One thing Lutcher is doing very well is just moving the chains. Sustained drive, good mixture of run and pass plays. From the shotgun, a mistake in the backfield. Picked up, saved. Jacoby Williams quickly on that ball, one of the more explosive players in the backfield and on this Lutcher offensive team. Well, uh, here's a good look at it right here. There's a mix-up right there. I don't know if it's supposed to be a reverse. I don't know if it's supposed to be a uh, I think it was uh, razzle -dazzle. handoff or <laughs> razzle-dazzle, as you call it. But, uh, Ball goes on the ground, and they're lucky that they come back uh, yeah, with the football. Williams right there. Good save by him. Good look at Jacoby Williams right there. He also plays wide receiver. You'll see him in the backfield some. They move him around all over the field on that Lutcher offense. Second down, 10. Bourgeois with lots of time. Good protection, steps up in the pocket. Now it finally breaks down, and he goes down. Getting just a few yards out of it. Well, these are the situations they don't want to be in. They're in third and long. All right, you know uh, they have the, they have the uh, the bad handoff on 
on second down. They have to throw the ball, or excuse me, on first down. They have to throw the ball on second down. Now they're looking at third and long. They pick nothing up because the protection breaks down. It's hard to run against this St. James defensive front. They're just so big across the front. Greg James, 6'5", Savion Jones, 6'5", DeAndre Keller, 6'2", Chase Gleason, the linebacker, 6'4". They've got pretty good weight to go with it, but more importantly, they've got speed to go with that. So on third down and 10, let's see if Kobe Bourgeois can dissect that defense. He'll go long down the left side for Jacoby Williams. For a moment, he was open because the defender slipped down. Reed Batiste was covering and slipped and gave Williams the, the advantage, but they just couldn't catch up to the football. Jacoby Williams running down the field with a little bump and shove, uh, all incidental. Ball couldn't get be caught right there. And, uh, you know, the situation is you get put in these long down and distances, and it's, it's just tough to be able to uh, dial up the right play to pick up that, uh, that, that first down. And that's exactly what happened in that series for Lutcher. The opponent is Cam Amato at four months last week against East Ascension, averaged right at about 28 yards, gets a nice one here, fair catch call for, and they back St. James up to their own 10 yard line. So with that, we will take a break and see when we return the St. James Wildcat offense for the first time tonight. Your home for the best in coverage of pro, college, and prep sports in the New Orleans area is CrescentCitySports.com. Whether it's news, opinions, live video webcasts of high school sports, or Louisiana's best prep football scoreboard, you can get it all at Crescent City Sports. The name may be new, but it's the same great coverage you've gotten for years from our team of New Orleans natives. Click it now and like us on social media at CrescentCitySports.com. Shamar Smith, number three, the quarterback for St. James. He is as explosive as they come. Great story that will unfold. You can see his numbers last year, 552 yards rushing, over 1,000 yards passing. This young man can get it done. More importantly, look at receiving yards. Triple threat player because he was a receiver before they had to move him to quarterback. He'll scramble. Nifty move, but a good shoestring tackle by Chris Burkhalter. So with that, let's take a look at the St. James offense brought to you by Riverlands Insurance. Well, the guy you're going to have to look at is number two. Uh, Ken, uh, Sean LaBeouf, uh, last week he rushed for over 105, he rushed for 105 yards against a stout West St. John defense. He's a uh, solid looking running back. He has great leg drive, strong upper body. Look for him to do good things tonight. There he goes right there. Second down and seven. They heard you. They give it to LaBeouf, and he'll go straight ahead to make it third down and short yardage. And with that, let's take a look at the Lutcher defense brought to you by Riverlands Insurance. This is a big, strong Lutcher defense. Well, I'll tell you what, number 11, Shane McCrary, if you recognize that name, Ken, he's been around for the past three years. I think he was on their last state championship team when they faced the same St. James Wildcats in the Superdome a couple of years back. He's going to have to come up big, though, tonight to be able to shut down this powerful St. James offense. St. James did not throw very much against West St. John last week because they jumped out to such an early lead. They didn't have to. They just kept the ball on the ground and just ground out yardage, ran a lot of clock, and put a big victory away in what's a parish rivalry for them. And there's LaBeouf again just putting that head down with a strong charge right up the middle, finding the hole and moving the chains first down. LaBeouf taking the inside zone read right there from uh, Shamir Smith. Uh, you know, let's go back to Shamir Smith for a second. You saw those receiving yards on his stats from last year? Mm -hmm. uh, right. Robert Valdez found this guy. He was playing slot receiver, wide receiver. He takes their best athlete, moves him to quarterback, and then the rest is history for the St. James Wildcats last year. That's how good of an athlete this young man is. They actually moved him to quarterback sooner than they really wanted to. Go all the way back to Leonard Narcisse. 
Leonard Narcisse's there gets injured. Demarcus right. Williams has to move into the quarterback slot, which then affects Shamar because he's got to move to a different position. Then last year, uh, Demarcus gets hurt. And four games into the season, Shamar's got to move in to the quarterback slot a lot sooner than they would like to have moved him there. But it turned out to be a great move, right? So here's the bottom line. He's an athlete, and I use the word electrifying. Bang, a good throw, good throw. And here comes the flag intended for Shem Joseph. Getting there a little soon was Dejon Brown. Got there a little soon. Dejon Brown last week had a pick. Uh, one of the two picks. Uh, defense, on the defense, number 21, 15-yard penalty. That yardage results in a first down. And by the way, our referee is Kevin Claymore from the Thibodeau Association. Well, you heard Kevin Claymore talk about uh, Deshaun Brown getting there a little too soon. I was saying Deshaun Brown had one of the two picks. He was one of the bright spots for that electric defense last week up at East Ascension. So by virtue of the pass interference penalty, First down, good field position at the 32. Last year when Shamar Smith took over at quarterback, they asked him, don't just manage the game. Don't do anything fancy. Don't turn the ball over. Just keep moving the chains in little bitty bits. And to get him ready for this year, same thing. They said, look, you're matured. You're into this. Hand it off like you did just now to Mr. LaBeouf for a few yards. It's all you got to do. Yards here, yards here. Keep the chains moving. We're going to win football games. Well, Sean LaBeouf is a big, powerful kid. He averaged 8.1 yards last week carrying the ball against West St. John, and uh, tonight he's going to get fed a lot. Right there, he just got fed on a little counter play. This time the fake to him, Shamar will keep himself, and he'll just take it right up the middle, finds room, and he's up to the 40-yard line, three, two-yard short of the first down. Quarterback ISO, they wrap the backside guard around, turn out the defensive end of Lutcher. Huge hole right there as the guard wraps around to get up onto the linebacker and following right in the hole with Shamir for a nice game. With that, we have a hydration break and we'll take it with these teams as they take a break for some water. Back right after this, no score in the big rivalry. Five minutes, 38 seconds to play in the first quarter. The big uh, St. James Parish rivalry, St. James versus Lutcher. Lutcher had the ball for almost four minutes on their first offensive possession. Drive stalled, had to punt it away. Back St. James up to the 10-yard line. This is the first Wildcat offensive possession of the football game, and they have driven out to their own 40-yard line. Here's a pass, beautiful over the middle, wide open, caught by Logan Gravois, who's brought down inside the 15-yard line, and Shamar Smith was on the money. Shamar Smith laid it right out there on a very nice post route to Logan Gravois. Gravois getting a nice little head shoulder fake, got the corner turned around, breaks to the post, the ball's right on time, nice timing route. Here's a good look at it right here. Shamar Smith is going to set his feet. Kind of looked off the safety a little bit. The safety went with the look off, and then you can see Gravois right there reaching up for the nice, for the nice 46-yard uh, gain. Another look at it from behind, uh, Shamar Smith. You can see what he's looking at. You see how the safety was out of position right there? Ball laid out there perfectly. And this time, they'll keep it on the ground. Fumble! Lutcher's got it! In the crowd, ball stripping. That may have been McCrary or corner Poche. Carter Poche comes with a big bubble down there in the red zone. I tell you what, 5'9", 175-pound freshman 
nose guard, defensive tackle for the Bulldogs, comes up with a timely uh, turnover for the Bulldogs down inside the red zone. Fumbles and turnovers. Wipes out that 46-yard pass completion. And uh, Lutcher needing something to take that momentum away from St. James. Got it. Boucher, the hero of the day. So Colby Bouchard. From their own seven-yard line. Bourgeois from the gun, two protectors. He'll keep. And Bourgeois showing a little mobility himself out to the nine-yard line. Let's take one more look at that fumble. So there it is. There's the breakthrough. Look how he's holding the ball. I tell you what, Shamar Smith hanging that ball down by his thigh pads. Just gets it popped out. You can see him run past, turn around to go back and get the ball, but it's too late. There's Carter Poche laying on that big turnover for the Bulldogs. Second down, eight. Remember, Valdez talked about the fear of a bourgeois becoming more of a runner, thinks he's got better mobility than most people expect. And Bourgeois kept last time, keeps this time, but St. James is expecting it, and the D-line smothers him for a loss of two back to the original line of scrimmage. Well, here are tonight's keys to victory presented by the NOLA Lending Group. Well, I'll tell you what, for St. James tonight, they're going to have to have some offensive balance. You know, we've seen it so far in their first drive. They've got to have more this week. And for Lutcher, it's real simple. They're going to have to establish the run on uh, offense. They've got to get a run game going somehow tonight. R uh, Rondell Mealy is going to be a huge part of that. And then on defense, they're going to have to have some third down stops. Last week, they were terrible on their third down stops, which led to 40 points uh, against them. And they were 7-10 on those third down stops. So they're going to have to do a whole heck of a lot better tonight. Yeah, from the end zone, he'll throw short. Far side, incomplete. That one intended for Rashawn Williams. And that'll bring the punt team and Cam Amato, who got a beauty last time out and back from near midfield. Back the Wildcats up to their own 10-yard line. It's going to be interesting to see if St. James decides to go after this one or are they going to set up the return. Well, Amato... Almost nine yards deep in the end zone, and the return would be at the 40. I think you want the field position here, and don't take the chance of roughing the kicker. Gets a great Lutcher bounce into St. James territory, and will be downed at the 47-yard line. A 50-yard punt by Amato, who's only averaging 28 yards last week. He's come to with through two real big ones, and we'll take a break. St. James with great field position when we come back. Smile, guys! <laughs> Blaine! <laughs> My camera! <laughs> Anyone else feel a bit hot? No. <gasps> no worries, ladies. Got the shot. Is my hair okay? This is a great shot. We're getting this sweating off on the right track. <laughs> Train! <laughs> My name is Joanne, and this is my St. James Parish Hospital success story. My mom recently received care from St. James Parish Hospital. Mom was here for weeks, and every single department was wonderful. Not only was her care remarkable, but thanks to the staff, her home health was a breeze. I will be forever grateful for the patience, knowledge, and dedication of the St. James Parish Hospital staff. From the bottom of my heart, thank you for treating my family like me. Two great punts by Amato for Lutcher has gotten Lutcher out of a hole, but even with a 50-yard punt and a great Lutcher roll, St. James has great field position at their own 43-yard line. So let's see if the Lutcher defense can step up and answer this challenge with the explosive Shamar Smith at quarterback. Fake to LaBeouf. He'll throw to the left side low. In traffic. Lutcher's given them five in the box, Ken. They got to try to run the ball here. Uh, one of the things I said that St. James needs to do tonight offensively is a key 
is they're going to have to be balanced. So they got to start counting that box. You're giving them the spread formations. Fletcher's giving them a two high secondary, five in the box. They got to run the football. Guy who we haven't seen run the football or even touch it on a pass yet is Dantez Sterling. He is in the slot at the top of your screen. He's number 15. Second down, 10. We like to call him part of the one, two, three punch on this offensive side, but LaBeouf will keep, get to midfield. He'll be three yards short of a first down. Stop made by Burkhalter and had some help. Bounces it to the outside. The wide receivers right there do a great job tying up the Letcher defenders on the edge. Nobody to come off and support the run. So the buff does what? He splits the blocks, picks up a uh, nice five yards, and uh, brings it to third and three. You're up. At the 49-yard line. Oh, breaking right past the defender, but unable to get his hands on the football was Logan Gravois. He hooked in that long bomb, the 46-yarder earlier, only to see the Wildcats lose it on a fumble on the very next play. Fletcher playing too high or a cover two zone look right there. Uh, Gravois had problems getting off the corner press. So he slowed down getting off the corner press and slowed down the timing on the uh, route, trying to fit the ball in between the corner and the safety. The timing was all off because of the press by the corner. So fourth down, and to punt. Alec Mailer, a freshman who punted up the varsity last year, is an eighth grader. And he has a good leg. High, no fair catch call for by Mealy, who breaks one tackle, two tackles, almost breaks the third before finally being wrestled down near the 20 yard line. Whoa, how about Mealy and the escape ability? Well, first thing he does is he catches the ball, which is what you have to do down there. He elected not to fair catch, which I thought was a pretty good uh, decision, but breaks two or three tackles. He can run with power. They've just got to get him going tonight for the run game. Let's go inside the rivalry presented by Louisiana Operation Lifesaver. We'll get to that in just a moment because they're ready to play. Now you can take, see the recent series history that's on your screen right now. Bourgeois to Mealy. Mealy will run around the left side and he'll fight his way just about back to the line of scrimmage and no more. You've got to feel like St. James is going to keep a very sharp eye and some temper is starting to flare just a little bit on the field, but teammates and officials quick to make sure that that is kept under control. Chris Burkhalter, number four, a linebacker for the, uh, for the Ledger Bulldogs, uh, is a solid player, but also the two sets of linebackers that they've got from St. James, those guys can fly to the ball. Number six, Lamont Lewis, and number eight, Chase Gleason. Bourgeois checks with the sideline. Second down. Nine. Lutra trying to get out of its own red zone area of the field. Bourgeois again using the feet. And he's down to the 25 yard line. Got hit real hard up high. Gets up, pops right back up. He's okay. And again, Valdez maybe knew something in looking at this team because he said, I'm telling you, Bourgeois, I'm expecting him to start using his feet a little bit more. He's more mobile this year than I think what most people are going to expect him to be, and he has done just that. Well, right there, he, he set his feet, nothing open, and he just took off. You know, the protection was fine. He needed to hang in there for a second with his receiver's work right there. Uh, scattered on out of there, and then he got lit up by number 16, Brad Baptiste, who came from across uh, the field and just about decapitated him. On third down, Bourgeois again on the run, and he's going to slide for the first down, get hit as he's sliding. It's going to be very close, and I think he's got it. Well, yep, he's got it. First yeah. down, it's been all Colby Bourgeois in this series. Nice thing he did right there is he slid into second base. He's got to learn <laughs> how to do that. If he's going to scamper out of yeah. there, I mean, uh, Dwayne Jenkins is going to have a heart attack this season if that's going to be the M.O. You know, uh, they're going to have to be able to protect him on the throw, throw in game, and if he's going to scamper out of there, he's going to have to be able to find the sticks and make sure he goes down. 
Remember, back in 2015, Dwayne was the coach at St. James. Oh, the lefty throws, got a man in stride, Rayshon Williams. Nobody's going to catch him, and he'll take it. He'll take it to the yard, the dog yard and the dog pound. Touchdown, Lutcher, first on the board in this big rivalry. They beat him on the post route. Nice thrown ball by Bourgeois right there. Baptiste overextends himself on, on the uh, on the coverage and popping open was number 12 right there. Rashad Williams for 100 for 69 yard uh, touchdown pass. Beautifully thrown ball again on a nice post route. Noah Detelier in to attempt the point after. Low snap, but it's placed down well by holder Cam Amato. And it's kicked up and good, and we have a 7-0 lead. Lutcher over St. James, first score in this big rivalry. Well, here's your post route again. Sets his feet, gets the time that he needs. A left-hander puts it right on the money. And you can see right there a crucial mistake by Baptiste, number 16 for St. James. He comes under the ball with his downfield hand. All right, that's the thing you don't do. If you're going to bring that hand under, you better make sure you pick the football. So what happens? He doesn't pick it. The ball's right on the money. Touchdown, 69 yards, Rashad Williams for first blood in this rivalry game. You know, there's certain things you teach defensive backs. Rule number one, if you're bringing both hands under, you better make sure you pick it. All right, I'm sure he's going to get really lectured hard over there by Robert Valdez when he gets back on the sideline. Well, just seconds left in the first quarter. One more look. Good look at it. Two hands under right there, 16, ball on the money. It's six. Now, look, that's in any league. That's not just in high school. That's in any league. All right? That's just fundamental mistake by that defensive back. Cam Amato with a squib kick. Flag is down. I think they uh, stopped it. We've got a flag, somebody possibly offsides on the... Uh... Dead ball foul, offsides on the kicking team, number 11. Five-yard penalty, re-kick. There you go, there's your explanation right there. The Thibodeau Association in the house tonight here in Letcher. For this big rivalry. Amato with the squib. Let's see if he does it again. Oh, pardon me, I said Amato in the last one, Detillier will step up and he's the guy that'll probably put a leg into it and boot it long. And he does. And this is LaBeouf near the 20 yard line, taking it wide. Couldn't outrun. Fumble! It's on the ground and Lutcher has it! Lutcher has it at the 20-yard line on the edge of the red zone. The second big mistake, turnover-wise, the second fumble gives the ball up, and Lutcher is in the driver's seat. You know, turnovers will kill you, and it just seems like right now ball security doesn't seem to be the big thing. St. James wants to worry about playing a little flat, maybe playing a little on their heels, coming off a huge rivalry last week. You know. We talked about that at our production meeting this weekend about coming back to back to back to back on huge rivalry games and how do you handle your emotions? How do you handle making sure your kids aren't too high, they're not too low, you're coming off a huge win against your rivalry and that the railroad classic? What is it that you have to do to make sure you come out and you play, you know, emotionally balanced football? What did, what did you do when football? you were coaching? What did I do? I worked their tails off. That's Couldn't what think I about did. It. <laughs> I didn't worry about it you got to work their tails off and make sure that they understand we take care of ourselves first, like ball control and ball uh, protection. Bourgeois with the fake punt, then up high, a leaping, jumping catch by Jacoby Williams, and Williams won't go down. He's taking some St. James players with him inside the five-yard line. Jacoby what a Will catch by Jacoby. Right. Jacoby Williams goes straight up in his 6-1 frame. He goes straight up and picks that off right up in the air, takes it away from the defender for a huge play. The last 19 right seconds now. of this quarter was exciting, but we're going to take a break. We have played one quarter of play. Lutcher leads at 7 to nothing and is threatening one more time when we come back to start the second quarter. 
your home for the best in coverage of pro, college, and prep sports in the New Orleans area is CrescentCitySports.com. Whether it's news, opinions, live video webcasts of high school sports, or Louisiana's best prep football scoreboard, you can get it all at Crescent City Sports. The name may be new, but it's the same great coverage you've gotten for years from our team of New Orleans natives. Click it now and like us on social media at CrescentCitySports.com. Around here, we like things local, very local. Get the home field advantage when buying or refinancing your home with the local mortgage lending experts. NOLA Lending Group, a division of Fidelity Bank. NOLA Lending, now the proud mortgage lender of your New Orleans Saints. Louisiana Dental Center, your dental home team. Proud partner of the New Orleans Saints and the LSU Tigers. That might have been the most exciting 19 seconds at the end of a quarter that you and I have broadcast in our broadcast careers. That was fun. And uh, more fun for Lutcher, not as much fun for the guys dressed like the Michigan Wolverines, St. James. Right. We see the result of what happens on turnovers and poor ball security. So here we go. Lutcher with all the momentum in the world. Jacoby, uh, uh, Jacoby Williams goes up and takes that thing out of the hands of the defenders right there. And then he just refused to go down. Carrying five or six white jerseys down the field with him. Rondell Mealy is your running back, Jacoby Williams. Mr. Explosiveness himself is split low to the right side of your screen. Actually in the slot, Amato is to the right side. The pitch to Mealy, Mealy coming wide. Mealy with a shot to the end zone, he's in. Touchdown. Took the official a little while to put his hands up, but he's got it. Tell you what, Ken, Rondell Mealy better come to the sideline and find Cam Amato, the wide receiver, number two, and say, pat him on the back and say, hey, great block. Yes. Because I tell you what, Cam Amato was out there blocking his tail off on the edge, making sure his hands were inside the frames of the defender. Rondell Mealy danced right in behind him for the touchdown. If you joined us late as they attempt the extra point, that is the son of Rondell Mealy Sr., who played at Destrahan for Timmy Rebo at LSU and it was the MVP of the Independence Bowl that we talked about earlier and then was drafted uh, in the seventh round by the Green Bay Packers and spent two years in the NFL with Green Bay before retiring out of pro football. And he's playing like dad today. He wore number seven at LSU. I'm not sure about his Green Bay Packer jersey, but I know he was senior wore jersey number seven at Louisiana State. Had a great high school career right here in the River Parish. Just out at Destrehan High School. Played for Timmy Rebol. Uh, he was a wing T fullback. Tonight's game is presented by Yo College Inn and Rock and Bowl. College Inn, a true New Orleans form to table restaurant. Open Tuesday through Saturday for dinner and the home of the New Orleans Prep Sports Hall of Fame. Have you ever seen the Prep Sports Hall of Fame at Yo College Inn right next to Rock and Bowl? Yes, I have. It's a wonderful. Uh, display of some of the greatest athletic talent in uh, the New Orleans area on those walls. And plus, their hamburger steaks were good. <laughs> yes, it is, without question. LaBeouf, way on the other side, has trouble fielding that. And right now, St. James looks totally out of sync. Well, that I'll use a word, discombobulated. Is that yeah. a word? It just seems it like they are out of sync, as you said. Right there, the ball isn't caught on the sky, uh, the sky kick. They let it hit the ground. Uh, so right now, they're just, they've got to settle themselves down and get uh, uh, get things together. Here's the toss sweep on the touchdown to Rondale Mealy. But look at number two out here, right there. He had a nice, oh, there's number two right there. Great block on the edge to allow Rondale Mealy to squirt into the end zone for uh, another touchdown and a 14-point lead. And didn't have to do a lot. All he had to do was make sure that nobody was in front of that goal line, and that's exactly what he did. Now we'll see Sterling for the first time. Dantez Sterling touches the football. Didn't touch it at all in the first quarter, and I was waiting for him to put that little bulldozer into action. Dantez Sterling last week had two touchdowns. Takes the ball outside on a sweep. There's no safety support. Lutcher still in there, too high safety with five in the box. Nobody supporting down in the alley. The safety was late getting there, and 
Dante Sterling has a nice pickup for a first down. 5'9", 210 pounds, carried six times, had two touchdowns. That's a pretty good average right there. Nowhere to go up the middle this time, though. Lutcher was expecting it, clogged the middle, and uh, shut him down. Leading that way was Jamal Thomas. Jamal Thomas. Now, I uh, don't know if it's brother or if it's his cousin, but right on the other side of him, he's got Jamel Thomas. So that's going to be tough on us, Ken, making sure we get those names right. Number 49, number 99 for that Lutcher Bulldog defensive line. Jamal's the senior. Jamel is the junior. Trying to find some way to spark this offense, and Shamar Smith just can't find it. And right now, Lutcher is feeling it. They've got the momentum. It swung their way, and uh, they're trying to do everything possible not to allow St. James to get into sync. There's, There's a good look at Shamel right there, number 99. The junior defensive lineman for the Bulldogs. And we just saw a minute ago, Shamal, number 49, make a very nice tackle for that defensive line. Of course, with them on the line is Carter Poche, the young man that came up with the big fumble to stop that early St. James drive, and they haven't been the same team since. And look at this. In trouble, Shamar Smith, and they sack him back there. First sack of the night for the Lutcher defense. The Lutcher defense runs a slant right there with a blitz off of it. They slant to the strength, uh, to the offensive formation strength, and they, they bring from the weak side, the outside linebacker, right there, number 40... Looks like 48 right there, or 49 maybe. I can't tell what this is. I think that's 49. Jamal that's Thomas. Thomas. That's right, Thomas. That's Thomas. That's Jamel Thomas. Does a nice job getting off the block to get a sack. So it was pressure coming from the edge with the slanting defensive front, put pressure on Shamar Smith. He had no place to go. So the freshman, Alec Mailer, is going to try to punt St. James out of another problem situation with 9-25 to play here in the first half. Low snap, but there wasn't much of a rush, so Mailer took his time, used his head, smart play for a freshman, gets a great roll. Mealy will have to chase it back to his own 26-yard line. Good cut back up the field. Look at the room for Mealy, and he finally runs into a tackler at the 48-yard line. Goodness gracious. Flag is down. Zane McCreary made the stop a hard hit. Okay. Take so that back. Hold on. The stop. Block in the back on the receiving team, number five. At 10 yards from the spot of the foul, he first down. Stop was made by Joseph Aram. So with that, we'll have a timeout. We'll take a break here with these teams. Lutcher in control by two touchdowns over arch rival St. James. Your right. home for the best in coverage of pro, college, and prep sports in the New Orleans area is CrescentCitySports.com. Whether it's news, opinions, live video webcasts of high school sports, or Louisiana's best prep football scoreboard, you can get it all at Crescent City Sports. The name may be new, but it's the same great coverage you've gotten for years from our team of New Orleans natives. Click it now and like us on social media at CrescentCitySports.com. <laughs> We're back here at the Dog Pound in Lutcher, Louisiana, for the big rivalry between Lutcher and St. James. And once again, St. James has putted their way out of trouble. Lutcher should have had better field position. They should have been up close to their own 45-yard line, but instead a penalty, which, Wade, we, we, we're not going to talk about because what a big penalty that was. But Colby Bourgeois has his offense on the field for the Bulldogs in their purple and gold. They have been in control of this ball game. Tried to make up for what they were really upset about the dropping of the last week's game and at East Ascension. Tough place, tough game rather for Lutcher. Not too much on first down. Jacoby Williams with it. 
But East Ascension won 48 to 30, and the defense felt like they had something to prove because they gave up the 48 points. Four, the Lutcher Bulldog with his buddy right there. Been around for a long time. You did walk the dog before the game, didn't you? <laughs> yes, I did. <laughs> if he walked the dog, it was a yo-yo. <laughs> no, actually, it was my son's dog. So, But, yeah, I do walk the dog. That's, that's part of my delegated duties now, besides painting the house. Bourgeois with the little shovel pass forward to Mealy, and Mealy gets stopped. But one or two more steps, and he might have broken it, but he's shut down. Five yards short of a first down. Lutcher goes empty by formation. They motion Mealy back into the backfield. And then comes the little shuttle pass, which uh, Urban Meyer made so famously uh, notorious at Utah and at Florida, uh, which is actually a version of the triple option. Interesting. Yeah. <laughs> you study the play, you have three options on the play. You either have the shuttle, the quarterback keep, or you can throw it out to the bubble route out on the edge, which is exactly what uh, Butcher ran. They decided to shuttle the ball. Good read by Bourgeois at that time. Now on third down, overthrows Amato, who was open, but he was covered well by Tyler Stop coming from the outside. And Stive had a shot for that ball. I think Stive was more interested in laying a little arm on Amato than he was in maybe picking that ball off. If Tyler has his head up and he can see the receiver through to the ball, he picks that football. Ball was overthrown extremely high. He would have had a shot at a pick on that. So Cam Amato into punt from his own 12-yard line. They've had some nice punts by both of these punters on both sides. Bad snap, but wasn't a big rush. So he gets it off and will get a great Lutcher roll again. So Cam Amato, it's one inside the 30-yard line. Let's go inside the rivalry. Presented by Louisiana's Operation Lifesaver, who reminds you when you see tracks, think train. In addition to the many regular season meetings, Lutcher and St. James have met three times in the playoffs, most recently in 2015 when Lutcher prevailed in the Class 3A championship game. Dwayne Jenkins was the St. James coach in that game, but had Done a fine job as an assistant at Lutcher under Detillier earlier, and then when Detillier retired, they called him to take over this program, and he has just kept the ball rolling. Done a fine job here at Lutcher. First down run. And right now, I think the game plan for St. James is just to find a way to get clicking on all cylinders again. Well, I, I, they've got to calm down a little bit. I, I like what they did right there on first down. You know, it's a nice pickup right there. Puts them in a second and a convertible down here. And, uh, you know, they're going to have to get something going. I think they can get something going on the ground. They're just going to have to stick to it and believe in it and uh, try to fight their way back into this game. And they'll have to do that by moving the sticks on third down because second down will come up just a little bit short on the running of Sean LaBeouf. And, and what that means is they can't can't put the ball on the ground anymore. You know, they've got they've got to stop with the uh, the mental and the physical mistakes. Two fumbles, and that first one they're driving. I mean, they're one or two plays away from being in the end zone and taking the lead in this game 7 nothing, and instead they find themselves with two fumbles, and they're behind 14 nothing. with Lutcher using both of the fumble opportunities. That'll be a flag. You sit too early. The crowd won't like it. Well, I, the crowd that, might not like it, but it's the right oh, call. Oh, it's the right call, absolutely. Chris Definitely Buckhalter, got right. I think, is, is the guilty party. Definitely got there a little too soon. Here's our call. Pass interference on the defense, number 13. 15-yard penalty, yardage results in a first down. Number 13 got there just a little too soon. Rhett Whitney just got there and just went right through the back of the intended receiver. And uh, they're going to get the uh, interference penalty, which is a huge pickup into Bulldog territory. Well, with that, we'll take a nutrition or hydration break. Yeah, it's the same rather. thing, isn't it? 14 <laughs> nothing. Lutcher back in a moment.
Well, we're back from the hydration break for everybody else. <laughs> Nutrition break for Wade Kaiser, who was attacking, just attacking the jambalaya. No, you were attacking the... Pasta lion. Yes, pasta lion. We determined in this rivalry who had the best jambalaya and pasta lion. Well, that's part of the rivalry series now, especially here in St. James Parish. Is it the East Bank or the West Bank? Shamar Smith. And he'll just high step it to the sideline. A little showboating over there to get to the sideline. But he had nowhere else to go. And I think he's just a little bit short of the first down. Well, he takes a three step dop out of the gun. Nobody open downfield. Lunch is still playing too high secondary. So, you know, what does an athlete do? He's going to take off, use his feet to get as much uh, yardage as he possibly can. And that's uh, Shamir Smith. That's what he's going to do. He's an athlete. You know, I mean, at the next level, he might not be playing quarterback. Shamir Smith again. He wants the first down. And he'll keep it himself for the first down. And, you know, as an athlete like he is, he can play any position. He's showing his skills tonight. Right. Well, Robert Valdez, uh, you know, has said that you're going to probably see him playing in the slot uh, at the next level. And... Uh, now that's a good spot for him. He's uh, got the athletic talent to be able to use his size against safeties and uh, vertical stretch game uh, with the talent that he has and the hands that he has. He'll, uh, he'll succeed. You know, they talked about this year as he hands off to Sean LaBeouf coming wide, fooling nobody, and he's tackled by Chris Burkhalter and some help from Urson, I believe. Chris Burkhalter does a nice job coming in from his linebacker position, scraping downhill to make a nice tackle right there. He's a fine linebacker. 6'1", uh, 177 pounds, a little on the light side, but he can run. He reminds me of a guy that I coached uh, a while back that played last night for the Atlanta Falcons, Debo Jones. A uh, guy that can run sideline to sideline and make a lot of plays outside. But when you run right at him, he has trouble taking on the, those bigger blocks and those offensive linemen. Uh, speaking of running right at him, they take Sean LaBeouf and replace him right behind the quarterback with Dante Sterling. He's the guy that likes to run right at him, so he'll take the little screen pass, shake off one tackler, and finally go down low at the hands of Chris Burkhalter again. But it's hard to bring Dante Sterling down. He's so small, has good weight, but for a big guy at 5'9", 210, he moves well. Well, he's thick, he's strong, spends a lot of time in a weight room. Uh, not tall in stature. When you got to tackle him, you're going to get a mouthful of knees and thighs and shoulder pads. So he runs with a, a low center of gravity, which is what coaches like to see out of their running backs. And, and one uh, reception last week, so that's right. his second of the year, his first tonight. Third down, 10. Smith looking for the first down. Is it caught? On the far sideline, it is a catch and a first down by Tyshawn Williams. Good hands, and he knew exactly where the first down marker was. That was the big thing on that third down play was to make sure you get far enough for the first down. Well, you can see Shamar Smith sprint out to his right right there, looking for the out route right there by Tyshawn Williams, who knows where to break the route off just after the sticks. He goes and comes back to the ball on the out route. Lutcher takes a timeout with 4.08 to play in the first half, leading 14 nothing. They'll take a break. Be back in just a moment. My name is Joanne, and this is my St. James Parish Hospital success story. My mom recently received care from St. James Parish Hospital. Mom was here for weeks, and every single department was wonderful. Not only was her care remarkable, but thanks to the staff, her home health was a breeze. I will be forever grateful for the patience, knowledge, and dedication of the St. James Parish Hospital staff. From the bottom of my heart, thank you for treating my family like family. All right, we're back. Lutcher and St. James driving on the Bulldogs. So... The Bulldogs call timeout. Dwayne Jenkins calls his team over. They regroup. And um, during that break, Wade, you and I were talking about that out route and what a pretty play that was. Oh, what was nice was the route was run perfectly. Pushes the defensive back, gets separation. But what does he do? He comes back to the ball. 
which is what wide receiver coaches tell receivers to do. Make sure you come back to that ball and catch it and then get yourself vertical on the field. Very nice rep. Antoine Jackson is on the left wing. But this is a Smith keeper all the way down to the 10 yard line, Gross running with a purpose before being brought down by Lutcher. Rashad Long and Whitney on the stop. Go ahead. We're still right in this football game. But they've got to do it here because they're under the four-minute mark in the first half. Shamar Smith just continued to carry this team. No, he gives to Sterling. Sterling misdirects into the line, down to the five-yard line. And again, that little bowling ball just hard to bring down. St. James pulls the backside guard, backside tackle, a little counter sweep. And Dante Sterling gets himself wiggled up inside to the line of scrimmage, and he bursts through there and uh, gets a nice pickup for the Wildcats. Here's your first and goal play. Sterling wrapped up back at the 10 yard line and the Bulldogs were coming with everything and they drop him for a loss. They put Dante Sterling that time at the Wildcat. They snapped the ball directly to him and he takes off on a uh, Wildcat sweep, if you want to call it that, to his right, but nowhere to go right there. Lutcher with its inside out pursuit does a very nice job getting out there to stack that thing up. Really nice job by the safety coming downhill to make sure that that alley is field. They're going to do it again. Wildcat again. Sterling will throw to the end zone. And a little pushing and pulling, and it's an incomplete pass, and flags come down. I'll tell you what, I'd like to see that again on replay. I tell you, just to see if what was the uh, condition of A, where's the ball, B, what is the defensive back doing as far as playing the football. Here's your call. Set a goal, second down. Second and then down. see what was the offensive receiver doing in regards to getting off of, oh, there it is right there. You can oh, see it right cool. there. 29 had his hands all over him. You saw it again on the replay right there. That's a uh, understandable call by the, uh, by the uh, back judge right there. So again, Dante Sterling out of the Wildcat. He's close. Well, they're just going to keep pushing that big guy and say, stop him if you can. Lutcher has stopped him, but he's pushed closer and closer every time. You know, and talking about the interference again, Ken, one of the things that always intrigues me is I start asking myself three questions on every interference call. They're going fast. They're lining up fast, but the play's not in from the sideline yet. Dante Sterling again way from that Wildcat. Sterling with a head of steam over the right tackle guard spot. He's in there. Touchdown. A celebration by Dante Sterling up high in the air. They went all Wildcat, snap it to the big guy, let him just keep coming straight ahead. Pick your gap. Well, I don't know if you noticed there, Ken, in the backfield, he brought in one of their defensive linemen, DeAndre Keller, number 45, at the fullback position, who led right up into the hole to lead uh, Dante Sterling into the end zone for the touchdown. He also brought in a linebacker who plays some running back, Antoine Jackson, put him on the side of Dante Sterling for that extra support. Alec Mailer, the freshman, and he boots it through. Perfect. You know, as an eighth grader, as an eighth grader, he was perfect on all but two extra points. As we take a break, Dante Sterling gives St. James their first points of the day, 14-7, Lutcher. Riverlands Insurance Services, a team of professional agents serving Southeast Louisiana for over 40 years, focused on planning, implementing quality with personalized insurance. The strength of our company is our core of over 90 professionals specializing in the everyday needs of family to the complex world of business and risk management. Cost-effective insurance planning is how we help our families and our businesses 
every day. We don't wait for a disaster, we prepare for them. Count on Riverlands Insurance Services. Our Path to the Pros is presented by St. James Parish Hospital Rehab with physical, occupational, and speech therapy. Both of these schools have produced their shape, or their share, rather, of NFL greats. Current stars like Jarvis Landry and former pros like Corey Webster and Lionel Washington. Wow. Take a look at just some of the names on there. and well, it's, an, it's an all-star lineup. I mean, look at those names. Those guys had some great careers, and some of them are still having them, like Jarvis Landry playing for the Browns. Lionel Washington right now just took a job this year at leaving Tulane's defensive backs. Uh, coaching position and took a job as the defensive coordinator at uh, Southern. These schools have produced their share of big names. Well, we talked earlier about St. James being out of sync. That last drive got him in sync. Deep kick. It'll be touched back all the way back into the Lutcher end zone, and it's going to bring it out to the 20-yard line. Very nice deep kick right there. So Lutcher will have it with 2.03 to play before half, and coming up at halftime, well, a big recruiting story with Ken Trahan and Renee Nado. Renee is one of the local gurus of recruiting. Kenny keeps up with it very well also. We've got the Louisiana scoreboard from around the state. Nobody does it better than Crescent City Sports and the original with Ken Trahan. And we've got stats and highlights with Wade Nye. So good halftime coming up. And we've got a couple of other things for you in there, too. We'll surprise you. Rondell Mealy with the run. Is Lutcher satisfied with just taking a 14-7 lead into the halftime locker room? They played very well. Well, what, what they need to be satisfied right here is make sure that they don't create some sort of turnover opportunity by sloppily holding the ball, bad snap, something of that nature. So they're going to want to make sure that uh, they, there we go. They get a first down. They keep that clock moving. And more. First down and more. And Wow, Rondell Mealy has just been explosive in this game, and he busts another one. He's now elusive. It, right. Now it puts Lutcher in a position where they can start taking some shots. Still have two timeouts, I believe. No, they have one timeout left. St. James got all three. Still over a minute to play in the first half. Midfield. Colby Bourgeois. We talked early in this game about the kind of confidence and leadership he brings to the team. They just feel so reassured with him back there calling the shots. He's used his feet a little bit more in this game than he usually has. Merely stuffed at the line, going nowhere. Flags down. We've got a little emotional fun happening further downfield at about the 40-yard line. Who's going to draw the penalty on this one, Coach? Well, it's going to probably be offsetting. You know, both, uh, both guys, uh, you know, it looked like... Uh, DeAndre two, Harry. Four, yeah. DeAndre Harry, Harry for St. James. And uh, it looked like number eight from Lutcher, Talon, LeVay, were kind of in a little scuffle right there as, uh, I don't know if that's number eight or number six. Might have been Jacoby number six. Might have been Jacoby Williams number six. And they're a little... Scuffle right there, so you're going to get On well, number 19 contract. of the defense. He threw a punch at penalty is ejection. Oh my goodness gracious. Oh my wow, goodness. So he must Andre have thrown a punch. He's gone. So he must have thrown a punch. That we did not see. So in order words to get the ejection like that, he would have had to throw a punch, initiated the contact. So he's gonna get the ejection. Six foot senior. Starts some games, sees a lot of action. It's important in that defensive backfield, and he's gone. And 15 yards gives Lutcher the football now at the 35-yard line of St. James with 1 minute 12 seconds to work with. I mean, there's just no room for that. You've got to learn how to control your emotions and uh, be able to handle all situations. He's a senior. I'm sure he's going to get an earful when he gets to the sidelines. Uh, you know, a little shove here, a little shove there, but when you throw a fist, which uh, is going to make an official eject you, there's no room for that. And uh, that hurts your team. 
Well, it gives the Bulldogs just an excellent opportunity to do something in this final 112 of the first half with a one touchdown lead over St. James in this big rivalry game. But how many times in the pregame and in this game, at least three that I can remember, you and I have talked about keeping emotions in check in a big rivalry game. Bourgeois from the gun, Bourgeois with a man open under throws him. That's Rondell Mealy at coverage, but he was in front of the coverage, but Bourgeois couldn't deliver the football. Ball was a little under throw right there to Rondell Mealy. They move Rondell Mealy out to the wide receiver position. He runs the post. Seems like the post route is one of the favorite routes that Colby Bourgeois likes to throw. Right there, it's just a little underthrown. He had a step on the uh, defender, Tyler Stop, but the ball just was not delivered on time. He had time. Great job by the offensive line, buying him the time. Just not a good throw. Bourgeois last week only sacked twice against East Ascension and Boy, the line was challenged to protect for him, and they have done, but he's also gotten rid of the ball more quickly as he did just now to Jacoby Williams, who's on the sideline and gets out of bounds to stop that clock. They run a double screen to both sides. He throws it into the boundary where there wasn't much room to work, but the reason why he threw that side, Ken, was because that's where the less numbers were. So instead of picking on the wide side of the field with more numbers, you'll see him look that way, and he'll come back to this side, which is on the short side of the field. He gets nice blocks out there by number 56. Josh Taylor, the center, gets out there to lay a nice block. Uh, I think it's a very nice setup play by the Sletcher Bulldog offense. Third down and one. Mealy with a big hole. Mealy splitting the seams. Mealy with a push gets into the end zone. Mealy down at the one yard line. His knee went down as he rolled into the end zone. It is not a touchdown. It'll be at the one yard line and still plenty of time with 40 seconds to play in the half. Oh, Mealy wanted it all. Well, we've got a timeout now. Looks like the timeout's called by Lutcher. It's their last timeout. Mealy busts the inside zone right up the center. Nobody there. Gets all the way down, just gets tripped up down on the one-yard line. That's what we said tonight Ken Lutcher had to do. They had established some sort of running game, and i tell you what, Mealy has answered. Good look right there. Look at the wraparound block by the offensive tackle right there. Getting up into broken the Broken tackle, broken tackle, broken, broken tackle, tackle right there. Oh, and a stretch jersey. And he's down on the one-yard line right there. Yeah, knee went down. Looked like from here that was a good call. And where's those old tearaway jerseys from your era? My era. <laughs> there we go. Uh, I tell you what, if, if you looked right there, you see if this was the NFL, they'd probably review that to see if he was actually down. Did the ball cross first, then his knee go down, what happened? Uh, but obviously, we don't have that type of uh, technology at the high school level. But getting back to what I was saying, I, I said – in the pregame, Rondell Mealy had to show up tonight. He had to show up big time after rushing for only 21, 22 yards last week against East Ascension. He was going to have to be able to carry the burden tonight to get some balanced offense going for the Bulldogs. And he's done that so far. Self-evident right there on that nice little inside zone play. He's truly looking like Rondell Mealy Sr., his father, who played, as we said earlier, for Destrahan, LSU, and a couple of years with the Green Bay Packers in the NFL, and if he's ever resembled him in a football game here to start his senior year, this is it. Well, Rondell Mealy, when he played at Destrehan High School, was a wing T fullback, which translates to a tailback. However, he has to run inside the tackles a lot more. That's what made Rondell Mealy, his dad, such a tough, tough runner because he could take a pound in and just keep going. Mealy shifts over to the right side, takes the snap, hits right into the line, and no call yet from the officials. They say he is down at the one-inch line. My goodness, you can't get closer. Better get the on goal. the line of scrimmage. 26-25. They do not have a timeout. They've got to get that ball snapped quickly. Bourgeois with Mealy behind him. Hands off to Mealy again, this time over the right side. He crashes into the end zone. Touchdown, Lutcher. Rondell Mealy over the right side finishes off the drive. Well, he deserved that touchdown. He, did. he, he was the workhorse on that particular drive, and he deserved to get his number called right there for that touchdown uh, play. Key penalty on that drive was 
the unsportsmanlike conduct. The throwing of the punch by DeAndre Harry, who gets ejected, moves the ball from the 50 to the 35, gives Lutcher a short field. They take advantage of it, go down, and Rondell Mealy, boom, makes it happen. Ball hits the goalpost. I don't know if that was good. Looked like it hit the goalpost on the left upright. Here's another no, look at it. I yeah. believe that hit the oh, – oh, here's a good look at the touchdown right here off the right tackle. Mealy in. Touchdown. Extra effort again. Extra point was no good. Extra point was no good. It bounced off the left upright. Let's just remember that point. That's a big point that could come back to play out later in the game. In a rivalry game like this, my goodness, every point is critical. So with 14 ticks left on the clock before halftime, Lutcher, I would expect, would squib kick and not put that ball into the hands of LaBeouf, the speedy LaBeouf, who's deep, along with Dantez Sterling. So you kick off to Dantez Sterling, and that little guy, like a little tank, gets ahead of steam. That's why you don't put it, the ball in his it, hands. It's going to be gang it's tackle. Simple. Yeah, it, it's, it's not one you want to try to take head on. You're going to need help on that one. Kicked it over to LaBeouf. And uh, LaBeouf in trouble. He's just got to get down. And I'm sure a knee will probably end this one or they'll just let this clock run out. Let's take a look at that missed extra point where it hits the upright. Snaps behind the holder. Camelotto so it's kind of placed slow. Hooks it. Throws the timing off and boink. There it is. And That's boink, a big point. There it is. You got to have those. I mean, that's uh, th those things are automatic. Those are points that can come back to haunt you. But again, the snap being behind the holder, everything right. has got to be perfect. We take that for granted because we watch so many successful extra points. <laughs> I was looking at Robert Valdez giving that official the what for. You know, I, I, <laughs> that brings back some memories. I, 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 I enjoy that. I, I'm sorry. I, I enjoy seeing those officials getting that type of uh, <laughs> what for. And, you know, people in my ear right now are saying that I never did that. And you're right. I was very <laughs> kind. I, I, I never barked at anybody. Yeah. Oh, the best thing about memory is you only remember the good things. And you also can remember, Ken, I never barked at the media either, did I? All right, with that, we are taking a break. We are at halftime. It's been a great first half in this River Parish's rivalry. Lutcher takes a three-touchdown, 20-7 to lead into the halftime locker room. Spaceships zoom across the sky With every twinkle in your eye Wake up one morning, you're a man Reach out your hand Reach out your hand Have a great curiosity. I believe it's my destiny. Louisiana Dental Center, proud to be your dental home team. than half a century, Gills Bar has offered services, solutions, and support for businesses and associations looking for happier constituents and healthier bottom lines. To learn more on how Gills Bar can help your business, visit GillsBar.com. Around here, we like things local, very local. Get the home field advantage when buying or refinancing your home with the local mortgage lending experts, NOLA Lending Group, a division of Fidelity Bank. NOLA Lending, now the proud mortgage lender of your New Orleans Saints. 
The Crescent City Sports Rivalry Series on Cox Sports Television is brought to you by Nola Lending Group, your home field advantage. By Riverlands Insurance, meeting all your insurance needs. By Louisiana Dental Center, the dental home team. By St. James Parish Hospital, inpatient, outpatient, ER, and urgent care. And by Louisiana Operation Lifesaver. Remember, when you see tracks, think train. We are at halftime. Lutcher leads St. James 20 to 7. There's a lot of great players, as we talked about earlier, that come out of this parish and this game that play in the pros. There's great players all over the place that come from South Louisiana. With that, earlier this week, Ken Trahan and Rene Nado sat down and chatted about that. And, you know, before we go to that interview, Wade, You've coached so many players. You you know the quality of high school coaching that comes out of this area. It's something very special. Well, it's, we, we've got great players in Louisiana, as well as great coaches. Mm-hmm. You know, uh, you, you do. we talk to coaches from uh, Alabama, Mississippi, Texas. They'll say the football is as good in Louisiana as it is in their states. Uh, recruiters come to Louisiana to find skill players. They come to Louisiana to find uh, linemen and Louisiana, like many years, will go through different levels of players as far as it's rich in offensive linemen, it's rich in skill. But I'll tell you, one thing they get from Louisiana is they always get the players that can carry on their careers at the next level. We showed you earlier tonight a bunch of players that played in this rivalry series that are playing, have played in the NFL. Well, let's go to that package right now and and hear Kenny Trahan and Rene Nato talk about the the best players that we have right now that are being recruited by so many. Take it away. Thanks, Ken. Welcome back. Ken Trahan with you. We're at Rock and Bowl, site of the Great Enrollment Sports Foundation Quarterback Club luncheons each and every Tuesday at noon. And it's my pleasure to welcome our recruiting analyst for CrescentCitySports.com, Rene Nato, to the show, to our game. Rene Always a pleasure. Good to have you with us. Good to be here, Kenny. Always good to talk recruiting. All right, so 2019, let's start there. We know that the 2018 class was pretty good. How good is the 2019 class in Louisiana? Well, you know, it's, it's really good. And if you take the top 20, interesting thing there, Kenny, the top 20 in Louisiana, 17 of those players reside in the Baton Rouge and New Orleans area. Uh, seven of those top 20 are DBs, uh, five are linemen, offensive or defensive linemen. It's a little down this year in the top 20 wide receivers. Only got a two, and there's only one quarterback in the top 20 in Louisiana. When you talk about top players, most people point consensus-wise to Derek Stingley of the Dunham School and with what he's able to do, athletic, smart, quick, can jump, the whole deal. Talk a little bit about Stingley and why, in fact, he is that guy. He's a Mo Claiborne, a Tredavious White. He runs a 4 3 He's 6'1", 190, got a 42-inch vertical, as you said, Kenny. He's a shutdown cornerback, very, very advanced, very athletic, and he's a guy that can step on campus and be on the field from the opening snap. Well, we take a look now at the top players, top 10 players in the state courtesy of 24-7, and as we look at those, we notice that a couple of players are from the same team, from a meet in Ismail Sopshire and Devontae Lee. Talk about LSU's chances of landing one or both of these players. LSU cannot let those guys escape. Sopser has LSU, Alabama, and Florida State as his top three. He's a big, dominating guy, 335. And Devontae Lee has Alabama and LSU. 6'2", 212, 4540, very athletic. Both those guys could see playing time as true freshmen. And they also represent something that LSU cannot allow this type of players to leave the borders of Louisiana. Well, the invasion of Louisiana, of course, has been prevalent where Alabama's concerned in recent years. But Georgia comes in, and they get a really good player in John Emery from Destrehan. Where does Emory stack up? How does he compare to great backs recently from the state of Louisiana? You know, he's maybe don't run as angry, but I do liken him a little bit to Darius Geis. He's, he's 5'11", 206, runs between the tackles very well, good blocker, does everything well, good receiver. Darius Geis took a lot of pride in, in his play, and, and Emory is very much like that. A north-south guy can get to tough yards. Outside of the top ten that we just saw, about a couple of fast risers, guys that are moving up the board quickly that can make a real difference at the next level. Lance Lejean is a guy at Warren Easton that you know very well, 6'2", 205. Reminds me of Ketone Thompson. He was overlooked he, uh, last year, uh, Lejean threw for 2,000 yards, 
ran for 500, accounted for 33 touchdowns. He's got Alabama, Tennessee, Texas A&M, Georgia, Florida State, but no offer from LSU, which is very surprising. Lutcher and St. James, they have produced great talent in recent years, obviously, and over a long period of time. Is there one player that maybe stands out that could be that guy at the next level? Well, there's a guy playing tonight, Shamar Smith. He's playing out of position. He'll be a slot receiver. He's in a two. He's in a 2020 class, Shamar Smith, uh, 5'10", 160. Uh, he'll be a slot receiver. He's got offers from Kansas and Tulane, Northwestern and Nichols. He runs the 100, the 110, the 300 meter hurdles, and he long jumps. He'll be a very, very good player, but again, a slot receiver at the next level. Renee, thanks. It's been a pleasure. Thank you very much, Kenny. That's it with Renee Nono. Now we go back to Lutcher for more right after this. Joe Brown Park has always been a kind of haven, but the storm left it in a mess. Kids that don't have a safe place to play and go to end up in trouble. After Katrina, I didn't know if Joe Brown would ever come back, but it did. And today, its facilities are second to none. We're developing kids that will become champions in our community, in school, in business, and in life. Your home for the best in coverage of pro, college, and prep sports in the New Orleans area is CrescentCitySports.com. Whether it's news, opinions, live video webcasts of high school sports, or Louisiana's best prep football scoreboard, you can get it all at Crescent City Sports. The name may be new, but it's the same great coverage you've gotten for years from our team of New Orleans natives. Click it now and like us on social media at CrescentCitySports.com. We are at Lutcher. Had a little bit of a technical difficulty there, but we're back with you audio-wise from the Dog Pound here in Lutcher. Let's take a look at some of the scores being the first one here. Lutcher, 20-7 over St. James in what was an exciting first half. And uh, let's take a look, of course, last night, St. Aug beat De La Salle soundly, 38-20. Your thoughts on that game? Well, snap De La Salle's 21-winning game streak right there. Uh, Tell you what, uh, what a great ball game, and the athletes that were all over that field last night playing, uh, I believe, at Ted Gormley Stadium in that final on Thursday night. How about that Edna Carr Landy Walker score wow. in the second quarter? Well, Carr just continues to surprise no one. Everybody knows they're that good, and they're proving it again against a very good Landry Walker yes. team. Catholic of Baton Rouge, strong. The Battle of Algiers. Uh, yeah, the Battle of Algiers for Edna Carr and Landry Walker, and that's become a pretty big rivalry. And then that Zachary Catholic score, that's a big one in the Baton Rouge area tonight. Two defending state championship uh, champions from uh, uh, Division I as well as 5A. Uh, what a football game that is. John Errett and Hanville. Well, Hanville's going through a little tough time right now. If you've been following in the news, what went on the past few weeks. Well, Nick Salter from is right. still out for two more games after tonight. Correct. Playing without a quarterback that's been sat for uh, – the season and uh, four game suspension to their head coach Nick Salta from Agio. And then look at that score Destrahan St. Charles Catholic 0 0. What a big ball game that is over in Destrahan tonight. Another battle in the River Parishes. Can't wait to see Warren Eaton. Uh, Warren Easton as strong as Jerry Phillips' team is. Go against Brother Morton Saturday at 2 p.m. Here's a look at scores from around the state. Get the most complete and up to date Louisiana prep football scoreboard anywhere at CrescentCitySports.com. Presented by the All State Sugar Bowl. Nobody does it better than the original CrescentCitySports.com with Ken Trahan and his host of reporters. We'll take a break and be back with more of our halftime festivities and a very special tribute to a great friend and former coach when we come back. We truly love our new rows and the great relationships we are forming. We meet with local Medicare patients annually for a no-cost wellness visit and with their physicians suggest certain screenings and education. Patients are better managing their health. 
but these visits are also saving lives. Screenings we scheduled have diagnosed dementia, cancer, and leukemia. It's scary to think that many patients may not have recognized signs on their own. We're in the business of bettering health and saving lives. One wellness visit at a time. Schedule yours today. Riverlands Insurance Services, a team of professional agents serving Southeast Louisiana for over 40 years, focused on planning, implementing quality with personalized insurance. The strength of our company is our core of over 90 professionals specializing in the everyday needs of family to the complex world of business and risk management. Cost-effective insurance planning is how we help our families and our businesses every day. We don't wait for a disaster, we prepare for them. Count on Riverlands Insurance Services. Your home for the best in coverage of pro, college, and prep sports in the New Orleans area is CrescentCitySports.com. Whether it's news, opinions, live video webcasts of high school sports, or Louisiana's best prep football scoreboard, you can get it all at Crescent City Sports. The name may be new, but it's the same great coverage you've gotten for years from our team of New Orleans natives. Click it now and like us on social media at CrescentCitySports.com. greatest rivalries include community. Territory must be defended. When you include the mighty Mississippi River between those two communities, you have the ingredients for something special. When you take two high schools from the same parish, place them on opposite sides of the river, and then match them up in a football game, you have all the ingredients. It's East Bank versus West Bank. Communities versus communities. Families versus families. It's cats versus dogs. It's St. James versus Lutcher. Two years ago, when Wade and I broadcast this rivalry matchup here at Lutcher, that video with our colleague Rick Gailey providing the words and voice opened our broadcast. Coach Galey spent 19 years at St. James and went 10 and 4 in his career against Lutcher. Sadly, on July the 1st, Rick Galey lost his year-long battle with cancer at the age of 67. As we open our rivalry series schedule with a matchup that Rick loved, we remember him and keep Elaine and his family in our prayers.
This is the Dog Pound, Lutcher, Louisiana. The big rivalry, Lutcher and St. James. Lutcher leading 20-7 to at halftime. Your thoughts on the first half, and is this a surprise to you that Lutcher leads after one half of play? Well, what I like is Lutcher has found some balance. So if they find some balance, no, it is not a surprise to me. And they found some balance tonight with Rondell Mealy. Let's take a look at the highlights because Rondell Mealy scored and carried, had some big carries in this game. Starts off right here with a 69-yard pass to Rashawn Williams, who takes it to the house. Touchdown, 7-0, Lutcher. Well, then Mealy comes in next with a uh, nice run to put him up 14-0. Here comes the Mealy run right here. Gets the toss outside. Great block by the wide receiver. Pushes into the end zone to go up 14-0. Then finally, St. James comes back, gets on the board. And after a number of wildcat runs by Dontez Sterling, he takes it into the end zone to make it a one touchdown game. But then a late penalty in which one of the players got ejected for St. James gave Fletcher in the closing moments of the first half. Great field position to the 35. Mealy took it on a long run down to the one yard line. And then there he goes in for the score. Missed extra point as it hit the left upright and caroomed off to the left. Makes it a 20 to seven ball game. And it- and Here's here our first half stats. stats. What, what stands out to you? Wait. Well, what stands out is, is, is uh, Lutcher's rushing the football. I mean, if you look at that from last week where they were, one of the things Dwayne Jenkins said tonight is we're going to have to run the football some. We're going to have to see if we can do it. They can do it. Rondell Mealy getting him going means that they are balanced, and that puts them right in this football game, and they're leading it right now 20-7. to 7. And let's see if St. James can find a way to throttle, put, put the throttle, so to speak, well, on right. Rondell Mealy because he's what? the one that's hurt him more than anything else. But even when they have bottled him up, guess what? Bourgeois has found a way to open it up to somebody, and that young man right there at the quarterback slot, Colby Bourgeois, has even opened up a few things with his feet. Hasn't made the big run, but he's kept the defensive front and the St. James defense off balance with him moving around more. Well, the thing, you know, the name of the game for St. James so far tonight is mistakes. Two fumbles on the ground, all right? Uh, they're, uh, the, the young man getting ejected uh, for, uh, uh, on defense. You can see Colby Bujaw's numbers right there. But St. James needs to Six throttle up. down the mistakes. But, yeah, Colby Bourgeois right there having a great night so far. You saw his numbers. He's going to have to have a great second half and continue to feed Rondell Mealy in order to uh, give them the best opportunity to come out on top on this rivalry game. LaBeouf and Sterling are deep. St. James trailing in this game gets the ball to start the second half. The kick toward LaBeouf on the far side. Doesn't have a lot to go with that sideline kick. Lutcher's able to crowd that area, close the door, and now let's see if any adjustments. And what adjustments would you have made if you're Valdez and the St. Robert Valdez and the St. James Wildcats at halftime? Well, the first thing I'm going to tell my team is let's stop putting the ball on the ground and shooting ourselves in the foot and uh, uh, creating ourselves uh, holes that we're putting ourselves into. Only now, threw it five times in right. the first half. And then this, uh, if I'm Dwayne well, Jenkins. So that was a sixth time because they threw right. it once out of the shotgun. You know, Dante Sterling. If I'm Dwayne Jenkins, I'm telling my guys we've still got to play, continue to play with heart and effort and continue Dante making sure we control the line of scrimmage and running the football. Now you can see the enthusiasm in the pop Dante Sterling had on that first run. He says move the chains. Well, he didn't quite get enough to do that, but he got a bunch to make it second down and very short yardage, and that's what coaches like to have, second, and in this case, four. And they'll go with Sterling again, and he's just going to push forward and say, hey, here I come like a Sherman tank right through the line. First down, stop me if you can, because I've got a renewed sense of purpose in this second half. Inside zone scheme right there, making sure they're taking the fullback and blocking them backside so the defensive end doesn't sift down the line of scrimmage and bang up the inside zone around the A-gap. And then a good look at that put-up young man right there, Dante Sterling running hard on that inside 
zone. Here it is again, getting his shoulder pads square. Three runs, three Dantes. Sterling hit at the line and gang tackled by St. almost seven people on the Lutcher defense. Backwards, uh, right. got back to the line of scrimmage. St. James wants to cope out right now. They're trying to establish some dominance, trying to establish their will at the line of scrimmage. I'm sure Robert Valdez said inside that locker room, we've got to come out and control the line of scrimmage from the get-go. So they're trying to right now make sure that they are going to establish their dominance on the uh, the line of scrimmage. Hence, three inside zone run plays. Right foul, there. face mask, number five of the defense. 15 yards, tack on to the end of the run. That always Yardage helps, too. In the first down. Getting a uh, tack on to the end of the run, 15 yards, uh, personal foul, face mask. That means somebody gripped it, somebody pulled it. Number five right there is the uh, guilty party, Ivan Clark. Kevin Claymore is our referee from the Thibodeau Association, and again, a St. James penalty put Lutcher in great field position to score right before the half. Now a Lutcher penalty is putting St. James in pretty good field position on the Saint, uh, rather the Bulldog side of the 50. And this is a keep by Shamar Smith and the fake to Dantez Sterling the first time somebody else besides Dantez runs the football and Shamar Smith finally pushed back, but not till his head of steam takes him all the way down to the 40 yard line. What they're trying to do right there is to get the play side linebacker to float with the fake of the running back. Uh, Dante Sterling out to the outside. They're wrapping the backside guard around up into the hole. Quarterback is disconnecting the football and running the ISO inside, right in the B gap where the linebacker left. It's almost a, uh, uh, a zone read or some sort of a run option type of play. He can give the ball to Dante Sterling or he can keep the ball in the ISO. First pass thrown on this offensive possession, too low for Shem Joseph. So it's incomplete. It'll be second down, uh, pardon me, third down. And short, third down and four. First time they throw. Shamar Smith sometimes, you watch him and he's an athlete, he's good whether he drops back or he moves, but he's so much more of a threat when he's moving on the run with the ability to throw like he's doing right now. Because he can reverse his field like that, cut back inside, but he doesn't get away and he gets tackled. Seth LeBlanc. Seth LeBlanc, linebacker position, did a nice job scraping to the outside to try to contain the uh, sprint out of Shamar Smith. He does a nice job bottling him up right there to make the tackle. Well, your punter has been giving you about 40, 50 yards per punt. Unless he can punt it out of bounds, you may want to go for it, and they will. Well, they've got to get something established here. I, I, it doesn't surprise me that they're going to go for it right here. You're not giving up much if he would have punted it into the end zone anyway. So here you go on fourth down and about seven. Shamar Smith, if he could break one tackle, he could pick it up. He broke the tackle. He's got the first and a dive over a tackler. Gives him extra yardage to the 28-yard line. Oh, holy macro. They may mark it at the 27. Nothing open. He just takes off. Is he electrifying? I've been using that word all night to describe him. Here he goes. Sets his feet. Looks downfield. Nothing there. Let's roll. Let's roll. Let's get out of here. This is what he does well at the next. Look at the hurdle right here. Woo, there we go. What is he, what is he going to do at the next level? He's going to catch and run with the football. That's what he's going to do. And then back to Dantez Sterling, who busted right through the middle, breaking a few tackles. And Dantez Sterling goes all the way into the end zone for the touchdown from the 28-yard line. A 28-yard score for St. James, and we've got a ball game again. Well, <laughs> I'll say this. They've ran the inside zone about seven times in this series. Right there, sooner or later, he was going to pop that. Establishing the line of scrimmage, establishing the dominance up front, that was what they wanted to go out from the beginning to establish that dominance to get back into this football game. And they'll swing the gate. Everybody covered. And Mailer gets set to attempt a very important point after. It is kicked up, and it is good. So we'll take a break as St. James has cut the Lutcher lead to a mere 6, 20 to 14 at the Dog Pond. Look out, the rivalry is heating up. Your home for the best in coverage of pro, college, and prep sports in the New Orleans area is CrescentCitySports.com. Whether it's news, opinions, 
live video webcasts of high school sports or Louisiana's best prep football scoreboard, you can get it all at Crescent City Sports. The name may be new, but it's the same great coverage you've gotten for years from our team of New Orleans natives. Click it now and like us on social media at CrescentCitySports.com. zone. Look at him get his shoulder pads north and south, and he just outruns the whole lunch of defense for 28 yards, puts the right back into the ball game, down six. 2014 is our score here at the dog yard. You look at him, you think he's slow. It's deceptive. He's not. He's got that power burst, and he can break tackles. Is hard to bring down. Good look at that guy. He's all rocked up. Look at that. Kid, looks like you coming out of the weight room. <laughs> Tell you what. That, that, that's the real deal right there. You know, fit, strong, tough, running back that runs with great pad level, north and south. That's game phase. Mealy from the three. Oh, and St. James is waiting for it that time. Mealy, a little hesitant on which way to cut, and it cost him. Well, there wasn't much blocking in front for him. That was a wall of white jerseys, a wall of white jerseys. All of a sudden, he runs up, and it's like saying hello to the whole St. James kickoff team. Just lined up in a row. Correct. Hey, look, six friends, but they're wearing white jerseys. Not good. So, Lutcher's first time with the football here in the second half, 8.46, third quarter. Colby Bourgeois. Protecting a six-point lead, Mealy, 11 rushes, 84 yards, and two touchdowns in the first half. Gets the first carry here in the second half, spins away, breaking tackles, and somehow finding his way up to the 21-yard line. It is fun to watch Mealy run the football. Well, he's another guy that runs with his pad level down. That's what you teach running backs to do is to get that pad level down. Watch the counter right here. You see the backside guard tackle coming around. Nowhere to go. Great job right there by Chase Geeson stepping up. Fill him, and then he makes something out of a nothing. He gets his shoulder pads down, keeps his leg going. It's the mark of a solid running back. Should have been no gain. Instead, he gets five out of it. He'll shift behind Bourgeois. Take the handoff again. Look at Mealy with the hole, and he's up near first down yardage. He's got the first down. It is a first down Lutcher. Takes it, bounces it to the outside. Everything's clogged up inside, looking for running room, and picks up a nice first down. Boy, tonight it has been the Rondell Mealy show for about two-thirds of this game offensively. Around here. For the Bulldogs. Once again, Rondell Mealy up past the 35 to the 36-yard line, a little bit short of the first down. You know, it's 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 that's power row. You can, can be run out of any offense you want to set yourself up in, any personnel grouping you want to have, as long as you get a down block, a kickout block, and a wrap around by a backside lineman up onto a linebacker. It's commonly called power football, power row. That's what they're running right there, and that's where Mealy's finding his room off the right tackle. All right, from just about this position, Rashawn Williams caught that long 69-yard touchdown pass in the first quarter. Not this time, though. They won't throw to him. They're going to keep it on the ground. And uh, this has been an all-run series by the Bulldogs up to this point. This time, the St. James front closes it up, pulling himself up off the bottom of that pile. That stuff right there. Alex Byer and Samaj Scott. I was fixing to say that step right there, Ken, looked like his dad of old when he was a wing T fullback with yeah. the inside trap. Right there, they had a little trap scheme up front, and it kind of looked like his dad hitting that inside trap hole back when his dad played at Destrahan. Mealy, look at the hold, the cutback, and 
He just pushes everybody through for the first down near midfield. This is the Rondell Mealy series. Well, Lutcher's offensive line right there to wing. Their dominance uh, establishment came right there, knocking white jerseys off of the ball and creating a lot of room and creases up front for Rondell Mealy. Rondell Mealy with 116 yards on 16 carries. That coming with six, little under six and a half minutes to play in the third quarter. First pass on this drive. Bourgeois going long for Jacoby, and it's almost intercepted. Throws into double coverage. You're trying to uh, fool a little bit with some play action pass. But Jacoby running right down the, uh, Jacoby Williams running right down the boundary right there, and uh, he's got double covered from the safety across the top. Brad the Batiste had a real good yeah. shot to get that football. Here's another look yeah, at it. There's Brad Batiste. Almost, almost, picked almost off. pulled it down. Though. Right, almost picked off. I'll take off. that back. That was Tyler Stein. Brad, Brad Batiste coming back from the other side to help. Tyler Staub, number four defensively. They say this is probably our best athlete on the team. And that says a lot when you took a look at the talent St. James has on this squad. Junior, 6'1", 185, good height, jumps real well. Gets a good vertical. Just a little inside screen for Rayshon Williams. And he'll be tackled short of the first down, but in St. James territory at the 46-yard line. A couple terms for that type of screen, Ken. Jailbreak screen, uh, underneath screen, uh, wide receiver screen. Uh, any way you look at it, you get a nice look at an offensive lineman coming out and the receiver coming behind the line of scrimmage catching that screen. Hydration break, 5.52 third quarter, 20-14. to 14. Lutra driving. We'll be back right after this. Around here, we like things local, very local. Get the home field advantage when buying or refinancing your home with the local mortgage lending experts, NOLA Lending Group, a division of Fidelity Bank. NOLA Lending, now the proud mortgage lender of your New Orleans Saints. Riverlands Insurance Services, a team of professional agents serving Southeast Louisiana for over 40 years, focused on planning, implementing quality with personalized insurance. The strength of our company is our core of over 90 professionals specializing in the everyday needs of family to the complex world of business and risk management. Cost-effective insurance planning is how we help our families and our businesses every day. We don't wait for a disaster, we prepare for them. Count on Riverlands Insurance Services. Around here, we like things local, very local. Get the home field advantage when buying or refinancing your home with the local mortgage lending experts, NOLA Lending Group, a division of Fidelity Bank. NOLA Lending, now the proud mortgage lender of your New Orleans Saints. If anybody needed hydration, it would have been Rondell Mealy and Coach Wayne Jenkins says, He's the horse on this series, and we're just going to give it to the thoroughbred and let him run. They've thrown a couple of passes, but I think that was, if for no other reason, just to keep the defense honest and give Mealy a little bit of a break. Now he's had the hydration break. He's got some time. They get in the ball, and on third down, he got awfully close, but he is short of the first down. So it'll be fourth down and decision time. Uh, Remember, St. James had this, and they went for it. Yeah, they, they need to go for it right here. Yeah. I mean, let's, let's, let's you know, feed the horse right here. Uh, you think everybody in white is keying on Rondell Mealy? I know I am. I know our viewers are. Lutcher's in 20 personnel this whole series. Two backs, no tight ends. They stay in that 20 package. Bourgeois, hands off to Mealy. Caught in the backfield, can't break the tackles. It'll be first down, turn over on down. St. James with the football as they stop Rondell Mealy. First time they really shut him down. Chase Geeson, 6'4", 230 pounds. The junior had some help, but he was the key. Well, Chase Geeson makes the final hit right there, but Caleb Brown, number 10, penetrates the A-gap right there and slows the play down in the backfield. St. James brings a blitz. They blitz Caleb Brown from his linebacker position. Chase Geeson steps in to clean it all up. First down, St. James. What a stand. Great field position at the St. James 47-yard line. 
The momentum swings to the Wildcats. They scored on their last possession. They give it to Don Tez Sterling. They're going to continue just as Lutcher was feeding their thoroughbred and giving it to Rondell Mealy. Hey, they're just going to run Sterling until somebody can prove they can stop this young 5'11", 185 powerhouse junior running back. Back to the inside zone running game right there, making sure Don Tez Sterling gives his shoulder pads north and south. Running behind that solid offensive line of St. James who has come out and has dominated the line of scrimmage in the second half. Second down, seven right at midfield. Shamar Smith to throw. He'll scramble out of the pocket. Here comes trouble. He sidesteps one, but not the second. Pulled down short of the first down, but on the Lutcher side of the 50 at the 47-yard line. Right there, you can see uh, Shamar Smith looking downfield. What he didn't do is he didn't pull the trigger. He had Tyshawn Williams wide open about 15, 20 yards downfield and lost the defensive back and was standing there like uh, the Maytag repair man. Uh, Shamar Smith just couldn't pull the trigger, decides to take off and use his feet instead of throw the football. Shaz Preston in the game. He's a freshman. Brother of Sean, who graduated last year, is up at Mississippi State. Looking the other way, though, from Shaz and throwing complete on the other side to Logan Gravois. And Logan moves the chains for a first down. I'll give Gravois this. Three key passes that he was thrown to on third down. He knew where the sticks were, and he got outside the sticks, made the catch for the first down. Well, he runs that out route real nice. He presses the defender, gets separation, comes back to the ball on the boundary, knows where the sticks are. Good look at it right here. Good delivery right there by Shamar Smith. There's the out route. First down, move the sticks by Logan Gravois. At the 40-yard line, first down, Shamar Smith all day to throw back there. Finally flushed out of the pocket a little bit. He'll take it and run. Slipped as he cut to the outside. He goes down to 40 for a gain of a yard. Ran a lot of uh, space or a lot of yards to get that half-yard gain. Well, but he said, you can see that the turf is a little slick. Well, sooner or later, he's just got to stand there. He's got to throw the ball, all right? Or his receivers are going to have to do a little bit better job getting some separation from those defenders. Lutcher is still playing with five and six people in the box with a two-high secondary. So, you know, it's, it's hard to get that ball down the field. Those wide receivers get doubled up real quickly with those safeties and corners. Fake to Dante Sterling. Shamar Smith on the keep, and look at him. Carry some Bulldogs with him for a first down inside the 30-yard line, down to the 25. My goodness. What a run by Shamar Smith, the quarterback. There's that quarterback ISO again where he's reading the play side linebacker. Great job by the backside guard wrapping around. I think that's Donald Nelson, number 60, getting up into the hole, getting up and shielding off uh, the linebacker and allowing Shamar Smith to be able to uh, pick up extra yardage. A lot of beef when Nelson's blocking 6'4", 290, wears number 60 on the line. Dantez Sterling trying to go to the outside, grab him by the jersey. That might be the only way to slow that big guy down sometimes until the cavalry arrives and you get some help. Well, Seth LeBlanc they did blitzes. in that case. Seth LeBlanc blitzes in there and gets hold of uh, Dantez Sterling. And Dantez Sterling is just dragging him down the field. <laughs> you know, put the cart ahead of the horse. Well, the horse was ahead of the cart right there. Definitely. That horse was dragging that cart. Second down at six. At the 26, quick throw, right side, caught. And a good catch by Tyshone Williams. He's had a couple of big catches in this game. Had one drop last week and was very disappointed in that in the win over West St. John. Wanted a couple of opportunities. He's got them. He hasn't dropped one tonight. Well, he, he's got about three catches so far in this game, and they've all been big. There was a lot of cushion given to him up there on the little hitch route, and the ball was delivered right on time for a nice, nice game. Big third down and four. It's four down territory probably, but look at Dantez Sterling with the spin move and then takes a bulldog into the end zone with him. Touchdown. Touchdown. We are all tied up, and St. James is a point after away from taking their first lead in this big River Parish rivalry. Well, they definitely found the Wildcat. I don't know if that was in their offense last week against West St. John, but tonight, what a great move by 
the uh, St. James Wildcats to go to the Wildcat formation with Dante Sterling uh, being the Wildcat running the off-tackle powers and the inside isos from that position. And that's really uh, has set them apart here in the second half. Freshman Alex Mailer with Dante Sterling scoring all three touchdowns will kick the extra point. So he's got all three extra points and St. James has their first lead in this rivalry 21 to 20 with 128 to play in the third quarter. We've got a football game folks. Don't go away. St. James kicks off when we come back. It's a chain. Everybody's got chains today. And Dantez Sterling around his neck. That's got to be the scoring, the touchdown. The ball. I'm not sure what chain it is, but he's got him a chain. Well, they've started that in the college, and <laughs> they've got one now in high school. That's the, that's the first one I've seen in high school. You can see him holding up. He's proud of that thing. Look at him. Absolutely. And he's proud of it right there. That's what I'm talking about. What does JB stand for? So that's a little research. Our research department needs to go find out what, what does JB stand for on that chain. Take that chain off. He's ready to go in again. Get me that ball back, he tells the defense. Rondell Meadley from the five. He's got a seam. He breaks a tackle, and he's finally pulled down at the 35-yard line. They've been marking to the 36. How about that run? Wandell Mealy, a 26-yard return. Another look at that touchdown by Dantez Sterling that earned him the chain. Well, they're in the Wildcat right there. They run the uh, power to his right. Everything's bottled up. Great job by the Lutcher defense over there. But the backside pursuit over pursues it. He bounces out the backside and goes uh, 25, 26 yards for a touchdown. Now he's got that chain off. He's ready to play again. He wants that football again. Lutcher wants to hold that football and have a long, sustained drive. A little toss to Jacoby Williams on the left side. Williams finds some room. Jacoby Williams, an explosive player, as we've talked about so many times tonight, shows why right there with a first down run, 13 yards all the way near midfield. Great scheme. A little bubble swing. Uh, pass out to the wide side of the field, get some blocking out in front of you, get the ball out there to your athlete, let's just run. Jacoby Williams started as a freshman on their state championship team in 2016. He's played almost every game since. He is just that kind of football player that you want him in there as much as possible. Mealy and Kobe Bourgeois gets set on the call the fake to Mealy out to Jacoby Williams he's got a man to beat beats one breaks a second tackle breaks a third and finally tackled at the 45 yard line of St. James but he moves the chains again another first down for Lutcher Ken, that was a run take pass. that back not not a first down a little bit short of the first down uh Ken that was a run pass option at that time yep there was a numbers game that the quarterback was reading out on the edge and he saw that he had three over two out here for a bubble screen so he pulls the ball out of Beely's stomach and delivers the ball out to the bubble onto the edge simple mathematics reading should I run it? Should I pass it? It's going to depend on the numbers and the count out on the perimeter. And that's the guy that's making it happen right there, Colby Bourgeois, the senior quarterback.
Well, that's the end of the third quarter. The clock is run down, and Lutcher was, I think, just waiting for it to run down. So we have played three here at the Dog Pound. And St. James, with a second-half comeback, leads by 121-20 over arch-rival Lutcher. Your home for the best in coverage of pro, college, and prep sports in the New Orleans area is CrescentCitySports.com. Whether it's news, opinions, live video webcasts of high school sports, or Louisiana's best prep football scoreboard, you can get it all at Crescent City Sports. The name may be new, but it's the same great coverage you've gotten for years from our team of New Orleans natives. Click it now and like us on social media at CrescentCitySports.com. We started Youth Run NOLA as a group of classroom teachers wanting to spend some more time with our students after school. The kids of Youth Run NOLA don't necessarily have a lot of opportunity. Being a part of the Crescent City Classic has significantly impacted our ability to raise money. Enough funds to transport all of our kids back and forth, buy them all the equipment they need to go running safely. Winning the race is not the most important thing. This is all about setting a goal and achieving it. St. James ready to go in the fourth quarter. Ken Berthelot, Wade Kaiser, our Cox Sports Television crew, and a big rivalry game right here that has kept the fans from both sides sitting on the edge of their seats. Lutcher starts the fourth quarter with a pass, a long one down the field, and this is not going to draw a flag for pass interference. It was intended for Adrian Butler down the field, and there was some pushing by both players. Well, again, you got to ask yourself the three questions. Where's the ball? Nine. What was the position of the defensive back as far as where the ball was? And then what was the offensive receiver doing in order to get a chance to get to the ball? So you saw hands flinging all over the place, but you didn't see any jersey stretching. You saw two receivers answering my questions. They're both going for the football. Good call by the receiver. Good no call or by the, uh, de excuse me, the, uh, the referee, good no call. Hey, well explained, well played by Tyler Stein. Right. We talked Absolutely. about him earlier being one of the best athletes, if not the best athlete on the St. James team, which says a lot when you're talking to Coach Valdez because there's a load of talent on that football team. So now it's third down and four and uh, procedure. Somebody move. That'll cost them five. I think it was the right guard, right Both tackle. On the offense in the 75 and 58. Five-yard penalty, third down. Colton Poche and <laughs> Alex Byer. Those poor guys getting their name called when something bad happens. That's wait, wait, wait. We called Poche early now. He had, yeah, he had the big fumble recovery. Popped right well, no, that was, that was his, I think, maybe his brother on defense. There's oh, lot, yeah, yeah, look, yeah. Hey, look, there's a lot of Poches on, on, on the east bank of St. James Parish now. Just depends on which Poches those are. Well, it makes third down a whole lot more interesting because now it's third down and nine. Lutcher does not have the momentum. They've got to find a way to swing it in their favor. Bourgeois steps up, finds a man, open throws, complete. He's got a man now. And that is a big catch by Rayshon Williams for 25 yards. And there's your first down. That one moves the chain. Colby Bourgeois keeps everything alive by stepping up in the pocket and keeping his eyes downfield. Credit Colby Bourgeois on that throw. I tell you what, he, he just kept his eyes downfield. And the receiver worked open into the zone. Sean Williams and the ball was delivered perfectly for the nice pickup. All the way down to the 25-yard line. First and 10. Talking about swinging the momentum in your favor. That can do it. Blitz from the other side, but Bushwell runs away from it. Has a man wide over to the end zone. He throws it up there. Touchdown, Adrian Butler. I tell you, that was a great post corner route right there by Adrian Butler making the inside post cut, turning the defensive back around, and then breaking it out to the corner. Great ball delivery by Bourgeois right there. And Lutcher puts up another six on the board. Adrian Butler, hardly used in this game, comes up wide open and credit Colby Bourgeois Wade as you just said because he had he had to deliver on the money and he did now did you go for two Absolutely. or one right here gotta go for two gotta go for two in the fourth quarter gotta that, go for two this late because it's not it's early in the fourth quarter but late in the game 
Well, it, it's, it's, it's... They're going to talk about this. Right, it's the five-point deficit rule. You're looking at that card in your pocket. The coach is looking at that card, and I'm telling you, he is going to have to go for two right here. Now, who wrote that card, by the way? You know, all the coaches <laughs> talk about that card. All of the fans want to know who wrote the card. Okay. CrescentCitySports.com has live high school football twice next week on Thursday, September the 13th. The Newman Greenies face the East Jefferson Warriors. Then on Saturday, September the 15th, catch the Shaw Eagles as they open their brand new on-campus stadium against the Vanderbilt Catholic Terriers from Homa. Watch both games live at CrescentCitySports.com. Boy, that's a pretty stadium at Shaw, isn't it? I haven't seen it yet. I've seen pictures of it, but I have not seen it live. Wow. Well, that's awesome. A, a school in the Catholic League gets their own stadium on campus. That's uh, a tremendous burden that is lifted from having to have to uh, bid for stadiums every year. Or move games to move games Saturday around. afternoon or Saturday night when you'd that like to correct. play them on a Friday night. Friday night football is high school football. Absolutely. And you'd like that option. So here we go. Here comes the two-point try. Mealy. To the left of Bourgeois, the quarterback. Bourgeois looking back at the sideline. Since Jacoby in motion. Oh, he'll try to take it himself. Breaks one tackle, spinning, and he's denied the end zone by St. James. They bring him down right at about the line of scrimmage at the two-yard line. Colby Bourgeois had a long way to go, and it looked for a moment like he might be able to weave his way through and get into the end zone, but credit the defense. They stepped up and shut him down. Well defended by St. James. Option play to the left. Held onto the ball, didn't pitch it. The pitch was taken away. The quarterback was taken away. Great defensive effort on the two-point play by St. James. So it's a 26-21. Lutcher lead. Here comes the option. Have a look at it. There's the pitch. Look how well this is defended. White jerseys run into the ball. The safety takes care of the quarterback. That's Tyler Stive coming up and making the bang right there at about the three-yard line. Very well defended by the Wildcat defense. Aram Joseph had the pitch man so well defended that it took it away from Colby. If you're a football fan in Southeast Louisiana, check out the Greater New Orleans Sports Foundation Quarterback Club Luncheon each Tuesday at noon at Rock and Bowl on South Carrollton Avenue in New Orleans. Hear from the great speakers each week from pro, college, and the prep football ranks. That's the Greater New Orleans Sports Foundation Quarterback Club Luncheon each Tuesday at noon. And Tulane Athletics Director, or as they call it, the Ben Wider Athletics Chair, Troy Dannon, is one of the speakers. Oh, foul. Kick out of bounds on the kicking team. Five-yard penalty will re-kick. Along with John Forcade. John Forcade. John Forcade will also be at Quarterback Club. Mike Lewis, Michael. I think it's going to yeah. be there. Hey, that's going to be a lot of fun. A lot of fun. 4K can talk about how he helped put Shaw football on the map back in the day that's eventually led to that stadium being built. Well, can also talk about playing against me in high school. <laughs> that's right. You guys played against each <laughs> yeah, other. Yeah, we did. Yes, we did. You were the guy that took the pitch man out and forced no. 4K to keep the football all the time and run it which is why he's going through concussion protocol today. See, oh shame my. on you. <laughs> uh, no. uh, we tease John about that all the time. John, John if you would have pitched it more, you right. wouldn't be feeling so beat up today. All right, John Forcade was one of the greatest competitors I ever had the honor to be able to compete against in high school or college. He was such a great competitor and uh, such a great athlete. Ken, if you notice, uh, St. James back Lutcher up on the kickoff after kicking ball out of bounds. That's one of the options you have. Another flag on the kickoff team. They'll back him up five yards again for offsides. So they'll be kicking off from the 30-yard line. Dead ball foul. This could be a huge swing. Offsides on the kicking team. Five-yard penalty. We'll re-kick from the 30-yard line. Do you think to minimize the number of kickoffs attempts in high school football, they should just add the five right. yards to the end of the kick, at the end of the kick return. Uh, they, they, they haven't come to that situation yet. They're, 
the Federation's dealing more with things like uh, concussion protocols and things of that nature for the safety of the game. I don't think they're dealing or worried yet about the leg of a kicker. I think it, I think it changes Wayne the Jenkins field is worried right though. now about his team moving backwards on these right. kicks. Yeah. So to answer your question, no. I, I don't <laughs> think they should. <laughs> Make them kick again. You know, those kickers kick about 17,000 kicks a week. Shamir so. Smith, the quarterback, he's got it. athlete quarterback. He's got it on the kickoff return. And again, with the kickoff moving back to the 30-yard line, great field position now for St. James again. Look, I, I used to look down at my kickers, and they're down there just kicking the ball, kicking the ball, kicking the ball. Their legs are good enough shape. They can back it up five more yards and kick All right, here's where we at. Ken Berthelot, Wade Kaiser, Cox Sports Television crew, 11-23 to play in this game. We are in the fourth quarter. It is 26-21. Lutcher has retaken the lead in a game that's seen the lead seesaw a number of times. It was 7-0, 14-0, 14-7. Lutcher with the lead. They had it. They jumped up 20-14. St. James comes back in the second half, scores twice, takes the lead. 21-20. Lutcher just jumped ahead, 26-21. Missed on the two-point conversion. Now St. James has it. Who's got the momentum? Is it the Lutcher defense or the St. James offense? Let's see. Not much. One Saint yard. On St. James spreads the offense right play. there. They go empty to try to run quarterback draw. Nowhere to go right there. Great job by that. Bunch of defensive line stepping up to shut down that quarterback draw by Shamar Smith. That's Jamal Thomas, Carter Poche, Jamel Thomas. The one, two, three punch for this St. James offense is number three, Shamar Smith, number two, Sean LaBeouf, and number one, stick a five on the end of it is Dantez Sterling. They're hard to stop. He's going to throw long. He's got a man well covered, however, and he overthrows everybody intended. Way down the field for Shaz Preston, the freshman. Deshaun Brown from his free safety position, hustling over the top of that, reading the quarterback's eyes, knowing he's got to get at the top of that apex between the receiver and the ball, and he's right there. They would have had to take a perfect throw to drop that in there. Preston looking for his first reception of the year. He's the younger brother of Sean Preston, who was such a good player for St. James and is now at Mississippi State. Huge third nine, kid. Big, big third. Oh, look at this. Took too long back there. And finally, the protection collapses. And we've got a sack by the Lutcher Bulldogs, Seth LeBlanc and company. Jamal Thomas right help. there, too. There he is, big Jamal Thomas. Got to him. You can see the sack right here. Let's see if they bring a blitz. No, it's a three-man rush. They get look, to him he, off of the three-man rush right there. He had a lot of time. Eventually, that protection's going to break down. And that was a big, big defense. Defensive stand by this Lutcher Bulldog team. So Alec Mailer, the freshman punter, who last year is an eighth grader, average, had a long of, of 42, has really proven himself as only a freshman. Look at this. He uses that stocker style run, then kick on the run, gets a great roll inside the 10-yard line. And how's that to get St. James out of a hole and back up the Bulldogs and turn it over to your defense? Wow. What a punt by the freshman, Alec Mailer. St. James in the lead, in control. Around here, we like things local, very local. Get the home field advantage when buying or refinancing your home with the local mortgage lending experts, NOLA Lending Group, a division of Fidelity Bank. NOLA Lending, now the proud mortgage lender of your New Orleans Saints. My name is Joanne, and this is my St. James Parish Hospital success story. My mom recently received care from St. James Parish Hospital. Mom was here for weeks, and every single department was wonderful. Not only was her care remarkable, but thanks to the staff, her home health was a breeze. I will be forever grateful for the patience, knowledge, and dedication of the St. James Parish Hospital staff. From the bottom of my heart, thank you for treating my family like family. For more than half a century, Gills Bar has offered services, solutions, and support for businesses and associations looking for happier constituents and healthier bottom lines. To learn more on how Gills Bar can help your business, visit GillsBar.com. Second time tonight, Lutcher 
starts inside of their own 10 yard line. Rashawn Starks is in the backfield with Rondell Mealy. Getting the play, taking his time, lots of time on the play clock. Still 15 seconds. This is one you want to make sure you get right. You're deep in your own territory. And drops the ball, fumbles it, picks it up. He was kneeling when he picked it up, and that's going to blow the play dead very close to the Lutcher goal line. Talked about just now, making mistakes and not doing that this close. Right. Uh, yeah. yeah that, that, big mistakes. Those, those are things you just can't do down inside your own ten. He knows it. I mean, he knows it. Look at him. I mean, he's, he, he's pointing to himself. That's on me. That's on me. I dropped the ball. You know. Just I thought it was a little closer to the goal on, line you know? than it is, so I, I think it's okay. I mean, He's got a little room to breathe here. What can you say? There's nothing to say. It's, let's just uh, move on. That's that's what you got to do. Here's the pitch in the end zone. Give it to Rondell Mealy. Let him take it to the outside. Late flag comes down from behind Mealy. This will probably be a face mask. Mealy getting it out past the 10 yard line up to about the 12, but let's see if the face mask. It's either going to be holding or a face oh, mask. Wait a minute. Yeah. Hold on. Could possibly be holding also. Well, we'll wait for Thibodeau Officials Association referee Kevin Claymont to give us the call. There it is. Up to number six. Pop. Yes, instead of. They got Jacoby Williams on a hold out on the edge on the option. Yeah. Probably had a hold of the jersey, hands outside the framework of the body, stretching the jersey. No, this is one of Here's those a good look. that... There's your hold right there. Look at the hold outside the framework. Look at the jersey being stretched off the backside of number 11. I'm sure Dwayne, Dwayne Jenkins was screaming down the boundary about that. So we'll do the play over, throwing from the end zone to Rondell Mealy. He's got it at about the 12-yard line and then gang tackled out of bounds. But that, again, gives him just a little bit of breathing room. So that'll be second down and five. We had to play first down over so many times, but who do you go to when you need something big? You go to the guy who's been making the big plays all night, Rondell Mealy Jr. Well, somehow you got to get it in your playmaker's hands, and he's one of your playmakers. So you're either going to get it to him out there, a little out route. You're going to get it to him on a screen. Somehow you're going to get the ball into his hands and let him run. Second down, short yardage. Going to come to the short side of the field. Jacoby Williams, explosive as he is, turns the corner and finds the seam, and he's going to move the chains and give Fletcher new life on this drive. Well, St. James didn't help himself much on that play. Tyree Smith out at the corner, number nine, gets into a good job coming up and forcing the play inside. Watch his angle of pursuit here. He comes inside the perimeter. Bouncing outside is Jacoby Smith on the uh, sweep. He needed to come up and establish that edge so that way he could get the inside out pursuit. But there was no edge. Results first down. Out of a hole. And you put Mealy behind you. Four wide outs. Would they try it here? No, they wouldn't. They'll stick with Mealy. No, a good fake. And uh, that's an incomplete pass. Run pass option. Intended for Butler. Right. We saw this earlier uh, in the third quarter. Uh, reading the numbers out on the perimeter, if the numbers are right, you're going to pull the ball from the running back and throw it out to the uh, wide receiver screen. It's just one of the various run pass options you're seeing in the game today. The option to run it or pass it. And what it is, it's predetermined before the snap with the numbers. Quarterback looks over there. If he's got the numbers right, he knows what he's going to do with the ball after the snap. Wham. Are they going to call that a catch for a loss of three? Down that's on the ground. Right. Yeah, that's what he was. So now you just run the ball with Rondell one more time. Straight ahead. He's trying to get some of that yardage back. Boy, he took a hard pop that time. 
he's been taking a few pops all night, but he just keeps ticking. He's like the ever ready buddy. You know, he, he, he gets popped, he gets up and goes. He gets popped, he gets up and goes. Reminds me of his dad. Yeah. His dad used to take a lick and keep ticking. I mean, I had the honor to coach against him a couple times when I was at St. Charles Catholic. When we played Destrehan and Chamberies. We couldn't stop him. And that's what it's like tonight for Rondell Mealy. He's just piling up yardage. Oh, here comes pressure, and he's got to throw quickly. Incomplete, again intended for Adrian Butler. Going to Adrian Butler quite a bit. Adrian Butler runs a stick route. He runs to the sticks and turns around. Ball just wasn't delivered. Great route right there. Great play call. Just wasn't delivered on time or delivered accurately. There's a good look at Butler right there, number 87. Had a big catch earlier in the game. So Amato is in to punt on fourth down at about seven, about six and a half. Let's just call it seven. Amato has delivered a few big, both punters have delivered some big 50 plus yard punts tonight with the help of a little bit of roll. Here comes some pressure. Amato gets it off. This is going to be another good one. And it is fair caught by Shamar Smith. So St. James will have the ball. Your new home for the latest sports news in Southeast Louisiana is CrescentCitySports.com. Crescent City Sports offers unique features and opinions from a team of local writers, plus live web streams of high school games and Louisiana's best prep football scoreboard. That's the original with Ken Trahan. Matter of fact, taking place right now. So if you're listening or watching, Fire up that phone or computer or tablet, CrescentCitySports.com, the original scoreboard. Also on 990 out of New Orleans on a statewide radio network. It's all at CrescentCitySports.com. First down for St. James, not much. And we were talking during the break. And you had an interesting comment. St. James on the last offensive series you had noticed got away from what they had been doing so successfully and I guess the question is what did they go to and why do you think they did well, it? they got out of their 20 personnel they went empty one time uh, they got into 10 personnel all different things that they had been doing in the second half where they were having some success now they're back into their 20 personnel and they're getting the ball into the hands of their best players and look at this Shamar Shamar up third short Shamar Smith brings us to the hydration break with third and short so let's see if the let's see if the officials will take it here and they will so our hydration break let's wait get a drink of water we'll take it here back with this great rivalry almost done Riverlands Insurance Services, a team of professional agents serving Southeast Louisiana for over 40 years, focused on planning, implementing quality with personalized insurance. The strength of our company is our core of over 90 professionals specializing in the everyday needs of family to the complex world of business and risk management. Cost-effective insurance planning is how we help our families and our businesses every day. We don't wait for a disaster, we prepare for them. Count on Riverlands Insurance Services. As big as a third down can be, this late in the game for St. James, this is it right here on third down, a little bit more than two. They're at their own 40-yard line to keep this drive alive. The quarterback, Shamir Smith, taking it himself. He's got the first down. Boy, Shamar Smith with a cut just in time, but wait, hold everything. Flag down. Got some sort of dead ball penalty after dead the play. Dead ball penalty. Wow. Well... Let's sort Maybe a late one. hit or some sort of dead ball personal foul. They're pointing towards the purple jerseys. Fletcher. On a big third down, you got to have it. What do you do? You put the ball in Shamir Smith's hand. You run quarterback sweep into the boundary. 
Second ball, personal foul. And number five in the defense. 15 yards added to the end of the run. First down. Ouch. Ouch. Ivan Ouch. Clark. Ouch. Ivan Clark gets nailed with a big one. I, I, again, no reason. No. No reason. No. Th these are things you just can't do. That's self-discipline. Got to remember, you're in a rivalry game. We'll say it again. You've got to keep your emotions in check. And nobody knows that more than Dwayne Jenkins and just shaking his head because that's all he can do. Now the first down, instead of being on the St. James side of the midfield stripe, it's at the 41-yard line, and look at this. The momentum swings, give it to Dantez Sterling. Big run right up the middle, carrying Bulldogs with him. Another first down, and you've got a total momentum swing late in this ball game. Again, they go back to what they've been doing yeah. this whole second half. There's the, uh, Off the wild inside cap. ISO right there. They give him the ball. They runs it inside, gets his shoulder pads north and south. They're feeding their guys that they need to, and that's Smith and Sterling. This time, instead of handing it off, Jamar Smith Bumbo is on the ground, and Lutcher says they have it, and so do the officials. Oh the officials can car another fumble, the third lost fumble of the game by St. James. Rhett Whitney comes up with that. Oh, my goodness, I tell you what. Driving, pops the ball in the inside zone right there, and somebody just knocks it out of Erling's hands. Ball's on the ground, third fumble of the night in a critical situation. Holy smokes. Here's a look. He has it high and tight. It just gets ripped out. He gets ripped out right there by Rhett Whitney, who ends up also recovering. So he gets the strip and the fumble recovery. Wow. There's the good look from the end zone, and look at him get onto that ball. Oh, my goodness. I tell you what, he's going to be looking back and thinking about that all night. That was a huge play in his high school career. And look, from the 20-yard line, first and 10, big run. And you're taking a look at the hero defensively right there. Rondell Mealy gives him a good run to move the football. Rhett Whitney, that was his moment. And yes, young man, you can smile about that one. Jacoby Williams. St. James has a full set of timeouts. Now they're going to have to think about this because as this clock is running down, Letcher starts moving the ball right here. They might have to use one or two just to stop the clock to be able to get that last possession for a winning score. Snap right there to Jacoby. Went right in front of the quarterback to get it, made sure he was in his hands, and Jacoby Williams driving forward has the first down. Lutcher, the momentum is swung in their direction. They're on the move. Jacoby Williams makes a cut against the grain and turns it all the way backside uh, where the pursuit has over pursued from St. James. It gets nice running room right there to pick up the first down and keep the clock moving as well as get the, tie, uh, get the chains moved. There's your backside cut right there. Nice dig right there, get north and south. Duck that shoulder, protect that football. See how he's protecting that football high and tight right there? Got to make sure that it doesn't go on the ground right now. How much better is this Lutcher offense when you combine Jacoby Williams and Rondell Mealy in the backfield together and you can rest Rondell Mealy and, and let Jacoby run a few and then put it back in Rondell Mealy's hands as Bourgeois just did. He'll take it wide to the far side. Outside of the 40-yard line now. I think the question you need to ask, Ken, is how much better is this offense that Lutcher can run the football? Last week, Colby Bourgeois throws for over 300 yards. Negative yards rushing. Tonight, they have a 100-yard rusher in the backfield. He's connected on a couple of big passes. They're balanced. Yeah, Lutcher's... 170 yards rushing tonight for the Bulldogs. Mealy's been over 100 since the third quarter. Jacoby Williams on this carry. All right, St. James got to start thinking about using a timeout here. Yeah, you get down to three, and as long as Lutch is moving the chains, they're not going to put the ball in the air. So Robert Valdez right there by the officials. 
knows he's got to get a third down stop here and get that football back. If he gets a third down stop, that's when he's going to have to call the timeout. But you see, Lutch is just going to take that full clock all the way down, that 25 second clock, and just milk it all the way down. Snap it with about two seconds, one second left. And they do. Timeout, timeout, timeout. Straight ahead. They will not pick up the first down. So Rondell Mealy gets up and finally, timeout. Yes, he takes the timeout. Listen to you there. Mealy getting up, shaking off what might be just a little cramp. Not sure, but we'll take a break with the team's 225 left to play in this one. St. James needs to find a way to rally. They might get the ball back right after this. Your home for the best in coverage of pro, college, and prep sports in the New Orleans area is CrescentCitySports.com. Whether it's news, opinions, live video webcasts of high school sports, or Louisiana's best prep football scoreboard, you can get it all at Crescent City Sports. The name may be new, but it's the same great coverage you've gotten for years from our team of New Orleans natives. Click it now and like us on social media at CrescentCitySports.com. Choose a physician that you can build a relationship with. Choose a physician that allows you to take an active role in your care. St. James West Bank Clinic provides a personalized level of care to help you manage your health over time. And if your diagnosis requires hospitalization, you can choose to be admitted to a hospitalist's care at St. James Parish Hospital or Thibodeau Regional Medical Center. Choose quality. Choose compassion. Schedule an appointment today. St. James West Bank Clinic on Highway 20 in Vachery. Fourth down and two. It's about one and three quarters if you'd like to split hairs. Kamamoto is going to have to punt this ball away for the Lutcher Bulldogs to the very dangerous and speedy and elusive Shamar Smith standing back at his 21-yard line. Lutcher clinging to a five-point lead, 26-21 on a missed extra point, then a missed two-point conversion, trying to make up for it. He'll kind of sky punt, keep it up high, don't out kick the coverage. Gets a great Lutcher roll, and it'll roll down inside the 20-yard line. And Cam Amato, as well as the Lutcher punter, have both Mailer, have both gotten some fantastic rolls and good punts to get their teams out of trouble in this game. But here we go with St. James Way, 2-12. They just need a touchdown. 2-12, two timeouts. Now, you said something before, and we might want to go back to it. They have gotten away from what got them on the scoreboard and got them big yardage. They sort of went back to that, putting the ball in Dantez Sterling's hands, running him from the Wildcats sometimes. Let's see what they do here. They haven't thrown anything to... Tyshone Williams or Logan Gravois in quite a while. Those guys have made some big catches on first down. It'll be Dantez Sterling. He's caught in the backfield, spun around, and going nowhere. Great pursuit right there by the Bulldogs. I think it's Rhett Whitney and Chris Burkhalter. Burkhalter, number four, was the first to hit him. And when you need a big play defensively, go to the best athlete on the team. Chris Burkhalter does a nice job from his outside linebacker position, stepping up and making the tackle. Played off the block, made the tackle. It's just a small game. Clock ticking. Second down. He's going to throw. Long on the other side. And is it a catch? It was thrown out there for Shem Joseph. It's out of bounds. I yep, I think it's out of bounds. So it's coming back again. 133 to play, third down. Here's a good look at the catch. He does not have a foot in bounds. Looked like it was out on the white part of the turf. Here's a big third down play. This is four down territory. Oh, Smith with some real estate in front of him. He can run and will. 30, 35, and he's got the first down. It was wide open. He saw it, and he took it. Got to get to the line of scrimmage. Got to get your play called. They're going to start the clock after you move the chains. One, twenty-two. He looks downfield. Nothing there that he takes off. What he doesn't see is right there, a wide receiver wide open, standing right there, who ends up giving him a block. 
Uh, just didn't pull the trigger. Clock's running. you got to get going. Smith. Will lob one down the right sideline. He's got a guy out of bounds. Intended for Tyshawn Williams. But Tyshawn was out of bounds when he made the catch. That'll be an incomplete. So it's coming back. Stops the clock. One minute, ten seconds to play. Second down, ten. Route was too far out of bounds. Got forced out. You can see Dwayne Jenkins right there screaming at his guys. Uh, Robert Valdez right there. A little calmer than I thought he'd be. I think Valdez was going, how can you go out of bounds? I mean, right. You're in coverage, but you got to stay in bounds. And here's the second down play. Shamar Smith, lots of time, lots of time. If he starts scrambling, he's dangerous. Throws, got a man. I believe that's Dante Sterling. And it's just hard to bring that big guy down. Let's see if it is. Got a flag on yeah, it is right Dante Sterling. Got way outside. So Sterling's second catch of the game, but a flag is down, so hold everything on this one. Let's sort it out. Looks like it's against St. James. Oh, wow. So you're either looking at offensive interference here or some sort of uh, holding penalty downfield. Nullifies a first down and great field position with 55 seconds to play. Push in the back by the offense. So that's a spot penalty from that spot right there. We're going to take it back. Does he have the first down even with the penalty? No, it doesn't. No. So it puts it behind the sticks again. If you take a look at the right side of your screen, there's your block in the back right there. It looks like number two. two Sean LaBeouf with a huge block in the back against Chris Burkhalter. Good call by the official. Well, LaBeouf, an experienced player. Should know better, but second down and two may not hurt him. Working against the clock, which is running. 50, 49, 48. The throw, the catch, and Shim Joseph pulls it down for a first down, and does he get out of bounds to stop the clock? Yes, he does, but he doesn't get out of bounds very quick. Yeah. You catch that ball immediately, your shoulders should have turned to the outside, not the inside, so you can get out of bounds. That's game awareness, Ken. Game awareness. Got to know the time on the clock. What do I got to do? So if I catch the ball on the stop route or the stick route, which way are my shoulders going to turn? Right there, they should have turned to the boundary so I can immediately eject out of bounds, stop the clock. Well, they've got the first down. They're on the Lutcher side of the 50. Smith on the roll. Smith on trouble will throw. Has a man caught at the 22 yard line by Logan Gravois. Gravois sliding down in front of the coverage, pulls it in. First down. Clock stops while they move the chains with 30 seconds to play. This That's is an exciting zone coverage finish. behind everything. They play a bring a blitz. They get Shamar Smith outside, wide open, sitting right out there in the middle of the zone is Logan Gravois with a big grab. 30 seconds, Ken. What a great finish. At the 22. First and 10, 30 seconds to decide it all. Being chased from behind, he delivers just in time. It's caught near the first down marker, and that may be another first down on the other side. Again, the wide receiver catches the ball at the sticks, turns the wrong way. He turns inbounds, turn out of bounds. Clock stays stopped until the ball is snapped. Take a look at it right here, game awareness. He's going to get the first down, that's fine, but we want to keep the clock stopped until the ball is snapped. What does he do? He turns inbounds. Game awareness again. First and 10. Timeout called. This is timeout. Time for St. James. Saint They're going to talk this one over, and I can understand that you don't want to rush this if you're Coach Valdez. Well, what he's got to say right now inside that huddle is, A, 18 seconds, one timeout. If you catch the ball out near the boundary, get out of bounds now. Yes. Okay? B, Reinforce that. B, if we run the ball, which he can with one timeout down here, make sure you get up fast and get to the line of scrimmage. Don't lollygag. Ball is officially at the 11-yard line, so they can actually run the ball with one timeout with 18 seconds. They really don't have to be in a hurry, Ken. What's Dwayne Jenkins telling his Bulldogs defensively? Well, 
Dwayne Jenkins is telling Bulldogs is make sure you tackle, number one. Don't arm tackle. Okay? Let's don't arm tackle. All right? Make sure you wrap up and get them on the ground. And the next thing is, is if you have to interfere to stop the play, interfere to stop the play. Yeah. Don't be afraid to interfere in the end zone. Absolutely. Don't give up the touchdown as you can make them have to earn it twice. Oh, Shamar Smith will take it himself. He's inside the five-yard line. Got to call timeout. He's called timeout with 13 seconds to play. Okay, there, there's your one run now. Have, have a timeout. timeout. You're correct. App well, first thing you can't let happen is let the ball bounce around for two or three seconds and waste all that eight seconds. If so you can fair catch this, do it. So either one of two things, fair catch the football, pick the ball up, kneel it real fast so you can get some sort of, not back them up five yards. You still have you, the option. Yeah, you delayed by the white hat getting that timeout with the ball's thrown in the center of the field. We'll eat away that eight seconds. You go boundary, and then you take your shot on the second one. So let's see what happens. I'm going to prevent defense. Three real deep players. Three more midway through. Bobby Bourgeois has the boundary. Number. Oh, my goodness. Lutcher had one of three times in a row when Gailey was wins this big River Parish. Your home for the best in coverage of pro, college, and prep sports in the New Orleans area is CrescentCitySports.com. Whether it's news, opinions, live video webcasts of high school sports, or Louisiana's best prep football scoreboard, you can get it all at Crescent City Sports. The name may be new, but it's the same great coverage you've gotten for years from our team of New Orleans natives. Click it now and like us on social media at CrescentCitySports.com. Around here, we like things local, very local. Get the home field advantage when buying or refinancing your home with the local mortgage lending experts, NOLA Lending Group, a division of Fidelity Bank. NOLA Lending, now the proud mortgage lender of your New Orleans Saints. The Crescent City Sports Rivalry Series on Cox Sports Television is brought to you by NOLA Lending Group, your home field advantage. By Riverlands Insurance, meeting all your insurance needs. By Louisiana Dental Centers, your dental home team. By St. James Parish Hospital, inpatient, outpatient, ER, and urgent care. And by Louisiana Operation Lifesaver. Remember, when you see tracks, think trains. Ken Berthelot, Wade Kaiser, and the victorious St. James Wildcats 29-26 over the Lutcher Bulldogs. Ken Berthelot, Wade Kaiser. Wade, what are your, your thoughts on this great football game? We've been a great rivalry game. You know, both sides, both teams have nothing to be ashamed of, as I said earlier. You know, St. James came out with a different attitude the second half. Yeah. A whole different attitude the second half. You take one of the series offensively uh, out of there, and they come out and they dominate – the line of scrimmage. They put the ball in the hands of, uh, you know, their, their two stud athletes, Shamir Smith, and then Dante Sterling just owns the ground for St. James uh, the second half. Uh, it's, it's just a different ball game from that perspective. You know, Lutcher, Lutcher has nothing to hang their head about. You know, they, they have a great, they found the running game tonight. I mean, they, they have a great effort by uh, Rondell Mealy. You know, uh, Colby Bourgeois plays a nice football game. You know, these guys have nothing to hang their heads about. So they're going to get their heads back up for next week and move on into uh, uh, what they are, uh, what they have going on next week. But how do you do that, Wade? You've coached in many now, rivalries. You've been on both you, sides of so winning and the losing. Right, how do you right, get right. – like, if you're Lutcher, how, how do you come back from this? You bring them back in tomorrow and you put them to work. You look at the film, then you put it away and say, let's move on. You know, Lutcher next week has got a big one with Marksville. You know, that, that's, that's, that's no slouch right there. And then St. James has got a big one with E.D. White, which is another kind of regional rivalry, if you want to call it that. So uh, what do you have to do? Letcher will get them back to work tomorrow, look at that film, correct those mistakes, put it away, and then they're back on that practice field Monday with a new game plan. It's out of their mind. They're resilient. Uh, they know how to do it. And this may be a question that, people would say it's obvious but if you're St. James Robert Valdez you've won two emotional rivalry right. games West St. John first now you come back you beat Lutcher you know there's a tendency for some kids to say that's it we're really good and then slack off right. a little bit how do you make sure right. those guys stay on track well 
again, I think it goes back to preparation. Mm -hmm. They're going to have to bring their kids in tomorrow and say, hey, look, we put the ball on the ground three times last night. That could have cost us. We've got to go back and make ourselves better this week in practice. If we concentrate on ourselves, we fix these mistakes, and we go out and play the way we're capable of playing, then we'll be fine on Friday night. So it, it, it's, it's about putting them back to work, working them hard. That will uh, straighten things out as far as their emotions are concerned. You know, let's just take a look for a second. If every game in this Crescent City Sports, Cox Sports Television rivalry series is as good as this game, we're going to have some fun. Our next well, one, I, September the 28th, Holy Cross right. and Jesuit. I mean, well, look at all, look at all those. <laughs> every one of those have the potential to going right down to to the uh, the final wire. You've got history. You've got uh, district possibly championships. district championships. Yes. Um, so, absolutely. Every one of those games down to the possible final wire. And we've always closed with that John Curtis Archbishop Rummel high school game. As fun as that can be, listen, take nothing away from St. Charles Catholic at De La Salle. They lost, Cavaliers lost a tough one to St. Aug, but let me tell you, St. Aug is a very good football very team. Very good football. St. Charles was 0 0 at halftime with Destrahan tonight. Yep. Slight. Slidell and Ponchatoula, always going to be fun when you go up to Hank Tierney's house, uh, up 55, and see what they've got there. And Holy Cross and Chess, but again, one of the oldest rivalries. It's so big. Uh, Tad Gormley is normally packed like this one. Everything happens a right. ahead I've, of time. I've, I've been involved with that a lot of times, and I know exactly the emotions that's going to be going on that week. Well, we had fun. We hope, folks, you had as much fun as we had. We want to thank you for joining us tonight. The Crescent City Sports Rivalry Series returns to CST on Friday, September the 28th, with the 99th renewal of Louisiana's oldest rivalry between Holy Cross and Jesuit. Until then, join us for the live streaming action each week at CrescentCitySports.com. For Wade Kaiser and our entire Cox Sports Television crew that gave you great pictures tonight, I'm Ken Berthelot saying so long from Lutcher. Once again, the final score, St. James 29, Lutcher 26. From Lutcher, good night, everybody.